Hello, you're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... Ankalani. And... As always, Stephen Bagliaco. Hi. How we doing, guys? What up? I'm swell. How are you? I'm, I'm having a good week. Yeah? Big week? Yeah, big week. I took on a big video project shooting oh. with a, a legendary stand-up comedian I really admire. Hmm. And the Jets won this past week, yeah, which, week. trust me, I'm sure by the time you're listening to this, the goodwill is gone, and I'm ready to jump off a roof, but... I saw you put on Facebook the other day you wanted to kill yourself because of yeah, the Jets. Yeah. Yeah. And then they came, they had a miraculous win. Same, same game? Same, same game? game. They came back and won oh. for, like, the, it was their first September win in four years. In the month of September? Yes. So that means Whoa. they have started every season basically 0-4 wow. for the past four years, which means there's no hope. Mm, that's not preseason. <laughs> no. Hmm. Unfortunately, well, if Invincible no... taught us anything, preseason really matters. Yes. Yeah, you got to get ready to eat the poo-poo. Big week. If the Jets win, would you eat the poo-poo? Would you grab a, a thing of horse manure and just eat it just out of sheer joy? Joy. Honestly, I, I'm getting desperate enough that if I need to put that out there, mm. uh, I may I may eat the, the horse poop. Yeah. Careful. Might Good. have to eat your words. <laughs> <laughs> the Cosmos Kramer. Ow, mm. my elbow. Sorry. All right, so big guys. Big Year. Do you like Big Year? The Big Year, the bird watching movie? Yes. I like that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> it's fucking funny. I, it's awesome. Yeah. It's the most poorly marketed movie of all time. I legit thought nobody saw this movie. I can't so believe you're actually talking about this. I've seen it. Me right and Brian talk about Big Year all the what time. What the fuck? Yeah. We <laughs> love, I love Big Year. He thinks it's terrible. It's not Screw terrible. Screw that guy. <laughs> it's, it's not terrible. It's such a milk toast, forgettable movie. No, it's awesome. It's just insane Steve to me Martin someone would love it. And Jack Black. And Owen Wilson. And Owen Wilson. It's great. It's great. Watching birds on yeah. Atu Island. <laughs> it's sick. I can't believe you don't like it. I have seen it so many times, I have to say I like it at this point. <laughs> but it's, it's not good enough to the point where, like, Ant loves it. So I was flipping the channels, like, 12 years ago. Big Year was on. And I watched the whole thing. And I called him up and I said, have you seen this movie, Big Year? It's amazing. <laughs> it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. I was so hyped on Big Year. I thought it was great. <laughs> And he's like, I gotta watch Big Year. So he goes and watches it, and he comes back and he tells me, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and I I can't disagree with him. He's right. Why do I like this movie? You I don't shouldn't, know. but it's great. It's like a weird hipster indie movie, I guess, about birds <laughs> and bird watching. It's very yeah. bizarre. <laughs> Isn't that based on a true story, that movie? It's about people do the Big Year. The Big but Year is you have to watch, see every... Every bird in North America in one year. Yeah. You have it's to tough. It. It's very hard to do. Yeah. But isn't that movie based on a semi-true story? I'm sure somebody's done big years. If it, if it if, is, maybe we'll do yeah, it. Yeah, I was about to say, that's something we could do. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh don't threaten me with a good But, thing. guys, we are about to talk about horror, one of the uh -huh. scariest places on the planet Earth. A Long place Island. that utterly terrifies me. Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> the traffic. Yeah. The horror. Dude. Yeah, the, the horror. Dude. The scene where Kathy Lutz drives home on the Belt Parkway and is able to just travel. Yeah. <laughs> what a lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fakest thing I've ever seen in any they movie. They made it up. <laughs> it's fiction. It once took me six hours to get home from Long Island. Really? Christmas Day. From from Long Island, to how sister, deep in? How my deep sister in? lived at the ass end of Long Island. Mm. My Dude. aunt lived in the next town over from Amityville. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. It, so it, we were past Amityville. There. So you were deep, deep, deep into Nassau. Dude, I hated going there. I'd only go there two times a year: Thanksgiving and Christmas, and only if I had to, just because, uh, like, you're spending twelve hours traveling. Eastern Long Island, so, as far real, as real, compared real, to where we live, it might as well be Mars. Real yeah. quick, real yeah. quick. We have to paint a picture for, for non-New Yorkers, non -New Yorkers right. about what this is. Right. So we're on Staten Island. Long Island is connected to Brooklyn. Yes. They're all and the same Queens. Island. Same but island. at a certain point, it doesn't become Brooklyn or Queens. It becomes a separate thing Entity called Long called Island. Suffolk County. Suffolk County. <laughs> and it's super long. Or do I have that backwards? Which one's further west, Nassau or Suffolk? 
I don't know. Does I mean, it matter? No, it doesn't. Doesn't matter. It's so, all it's basically a different country. It might as well be. Basically, it's a giant sprawling <laughs> suburb. Goes out for like fifty. That miles. goes out, mm -hmm. t maybe more. Super <gasps> far. Yeah. There's beach towns for but some reason. The highway. <laughs> There's two highways. It is the worst highway in New York City. The Belt. The Belt Parkway. Well, the Belt Parkway into the LIE, the Long Island yeah, Expressway. Yes. The Belt is manageable. It's when you get to the Long Island Expressway. Like, they need a sign, abandon all hope who enter here. <laughs> because it is the worst fucking drive in all of New York. Yes. Anytime any New Yorker has to make this drive, you start thinking, should I kill myself? Because it might be better to die <laughs> than have to do this miserable fucking drive. Do you remember yes. when you and I did it twice in one day? <laughs> I was just thinking about this story. Oof. You were. Because we were just having a conversation off mic with Gedim about, you know, past uh -huh. hiccups yes. in our life. Oh. And that uh. story. Do you want to you yeah, tell? Yeah, I'll tell. Uh, All right. Many twice. years ago, I was madly in love with a girl. Yeah. And First mistake. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. mistake number one. I was in love. Doesn't happen when you're in love with guys. I don't, you made a <laughs> horrible mistake. She called me up. And told me that she was interviewing for a job in Long Island, and she had run out of gas. Yep. And she needed help. It was my birthday. We were all going to go Brian's out Brian's birthday. Mm -hmm. And we had plans later that evening to go to Long Island. To go to a Dave & Buster's. Dave & Buster's. It was very new at the time. Brand new. Brand you were so excited. No, none of us had ever been to one. Yeah. We were going to go to Dave & Buster's in Long Island. And it was way out there. And this was the morning now. A yep. girl calls me, tells me she's trapped at her job interview. So I... You call me and I you're like, was a new driver. It was you, my first car. Well, you call me and you're and like... I said, Brian... I'm not going to be able to make your birthday. I have to go help the girl. Right. And Brian was like, you're going to my birthday. And he's being the fucking great dude Brian is. He hopped in the car and he took the ride with me. So now me and Brian drive out to Long Island. <laughs> And we fucking drive. And, and drive. we're in traffic. And we're in traffic. And it's nightmare shit. And we drive for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> and where do we end up getting to? We, we, the address she gave me turns out it was a strip club. And if I'm correct, this is before Google Maps. Yes. We this didn't is, know what it was. This is MapQuest shit. Yes. We like got, we're printing directions. Yes, we got to the address and it was a strip club. Do you know? Do you remember the name of the strip club? No, I don't. Do you? Cherry Bombs. Uh, Cherry Bombs. Does that still exist? Yes. I, I'll never forget that. Does that yep. place still exist? I gotta do I some don't research. Know. I, maybe <laughs> Cherry <laughs> fucking Cherry Bombs. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. And she was at a nearby gas station, so we found her, gave her twenty dollars, turned around and drove back to Staten Island. Yep. Oh my God. We got back to. Staten you were like devastated. I was, yeah, because it was like I was not expecting the strip yeah. club revelation. I didn't realize she You was... still would have went if she told you that, though. I think you were so in love. Probably. I was an idiot. I yeah. was very stupid. No, at least when it came to this type of shit. Then we got back to Staten Island, met up with all our friends, drove right back to Long <laughs> Island. It was a terrible, terrible fucking day. Well, the, the birthday was fun. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> sure the ride had some comedic <laughs> moments. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, we were talking. Yeah, we were talking. Yeah. I, I, exactly. I remember we listened to "My Dying Bride" in the car, <laughs> and you asked me to turn it off because you just couldn't handle it anymore. I think I had a headache. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we had been driving for three hours. I always get car sick. <laughs> we had an Eden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brutal day. Yeah, yeah. but Long Island is not what we're here no to joke. talk about today. No. Wait, there's something scarier than Long Island traffic. Yes. What is it? Those that things that go bump in the night. Oh. Oh. Demons, uh, scary, scary we're demons. Doing the Amityville Horror, yes, 1979. One of the biggest hits in horror films it's ever. Right? It's legendary. It's it is one of the biggest, like, scary events to ever happen as far as real stuff. It's very famous. Everybody yes. knows about this. Oh yeah. Brian has just handed me his doodle for the day. Here we go. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's look like. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I don't know what this is. You don't know what that is. Come on. I thought this I was rec the I recognize that the roof is the is the house. Yeah. I see the windows. You've done a horrible job at making the windows because they're supposed to look like evil eyes, and you didn't do that. You made them square. <laughs> um, the bottom, I know what the house looks like. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that's supposed to be like the greenhouse siding thing. 
right? Yeah, like the the, yeah. the staircase. He and the made terrace. teeth. He gave the house a mouth and gave it te- smiling teeth. Like it's going, yee. Um, and a ladder. The house has a ladder on No, those are the stairs. I got to admit. The house doesn't have stairs. Yeah, it has stairs it, to get in. Steven? It has like small steps coming yeah, up, but um, not those, stairs. Those um, are the small I steps. I got to admit, before the show started, I glanced over to see a small doodle. And I don't know if you're going to hear it in the intro, but I go. <laughs> oh, you're just <laughs> laughing at the doodle. I crack because I'm like, what am I? Oh, my God. So, <laughs> okay, it, 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 it it's so hard to explain. It's teeth. It's teeth. It's fucking teeth. It's teeth. What is it supposed to be? It could it's be a mask. Mm-hmm. It also could be a futuristic rifle from like Starship Troopers. And it's not like sharp, <laughs> scary teeth. It's like no it people lo- teeth. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> smiling. You know what? It could yeah. It could be a <laughs> neck, and like the face goes elongated, and it's just like e, and it has like the third eye. You know what I mean? Well, those are th- those are the bottom windows, the windows to the front, f- to the clearly, yeah, to the front. It, it's definitely an, a, an amazing, <laughs> amazing piece of art. We've yeah. all um, up for interpretation. We've all seen this movie before, right? No, I had never seen uh, it. It's the first just, time you've seen it. I, had ne- I saw the remake with Ryan Reynolds. I had uh, never seen this movie. Same, same. I love this movie. Okay. It's one of my favorite horror movies ever. It's okay. probably my second favorite. Seen it What's multiple your favorite? times. And uh, Blair Witch. Okay. I know you hate that. I hate the we, technically, we, we can't do that. Could we? Could we do the I Blair like full car stuff, I realized. Yeah. Uh, I recently watched like a two hour long video on YouTube about full car and its origins. Okay. And it was great. That's and cool. I realized I like like all those movies, like uh, The Wicker Man and the. Do you remember that movie I, I asked you to watch with the the, the Sweden? Inter- the Ritual, I believe. The ritual. You ever see that? No. That faux car. Oh yeah. Amityville is not watch. faux car. No. <laughs> no. Um, no. This is your standard. Well, but you like hold it. on. Wait, yes. I'll Love say. It. I'll say this. In two hundred years, could it be considered faux car? Ah, uh, maybe in two hundred. You know years. what I mean? Right. It depends what folk for is us. Considered. It's recent. Right. In two hundred years, it's like usually there's paganism and 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 um, yeah, you know the nature element. To there's the still folk. modern folk that comes out today, but this is not that. This is well, like I said, it's one of the most famous incidents in this type of stuff ever. Uh, you've got all kinds of. There's so much that's been said about this incident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, recent. Whether it's books, movies, documentaries. I mean, there's a million spinoffs. Like, right. The name Amityville is a franchise unto itself, and right. people will slap mm-hmm. it on anything. Like, there's a movie out right now where there's like the house is in outer space and there's sharks and shit. <laughs> exactly. I saw rappers make a music video in the house, and it's like horror themed. Like the song's horror themed, and uh-huh. they're in the house out right. there. It's like, oh, that's. You know what? I, I, it's kind of cool. Got its own little thing. I first became aware of the mo- the movie, the book, the story as a little kid. Same here. I think as New Yorkers, it's a story that you get told early in elementary school mm-hmm. by kids on the playground. They're like, in Amityville, there's this thing, and it's in New York. And like as a kid, I Long Island, Staten Island, I always kind of thought it was like the same place or like really close. So like I drive past a house, and I'd be like, is that the house? I have a vivid memory but talking about this with our mutual friend when I was in like the fourth grade yeah, and him being like you can't even say the name bro (laughs) you say the name it's fucked up like Bloody Mary (laughs) yeah right my mom was always super into this she loves talking about it your mom's a ghost mom right my mom loves ghost stuff Loves ghost stuff. I feel stuff. like if you're watches, an Italian, you you have that. Watches like haunted shows mm. on TV all the time. <laughs> loves any kind of ghost, ghost story. She loves connecting herself to like stories. Like when she was a kid, she was at her sister's house in Long Island, which was nearby the house. The <laughs> night the Lu- the DeFeos were murdered, and she was like, "I was there." You know, <laughs> oh. acts like she was part of it. Oh, your mother was like... Um, she fucking loves the Amityville <laughs> shit. And when I told her we were going to talk about this today, she got all excited. Oh, yeah? And she uh, was like, you should... You got to watch this, 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 and this. You got to be talk about all this. And it's like, I know, Ma. I lived with you for forever. This is your favorite subject in the world. Okay. Um, this one goes out to you. Yeah. Miss Galati. So, yeah. Mrs. Galati. This is something I've, I've been versed in since I was a boy. 
And let's let's hop right in. Um, this this well, happened, hold on. this uh, happened uh, recent. What's though. your uh, what's your take on the movie? I uh, I did not see it before. I saw the remake. You guys never saw this. I did never. I, I never didn't see, see the seventy nine version. I saw the remake with Ryan Reynolds fairly recently, mm-hmm. and uh, I knew about Amityville without seeing the movie, because as you said, if, when you're from New York, it you know about it. Mm-hmm. It that's like to me, it's almost equivalent to hearing about Sleepy Hollow if you live here. Like that's, that's a good. Um, it's so similar. It's almost become folklore. Like right. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Only this folklore happened in like seventy four. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it, uh, it's pretty crazy. What'd you guys think? I I, I love the new one and I love this one. So, so I had to approach it a little differently. So, and I had to get into a different mind state for it. So the two thousand five one I saw in theaters and I liked it. I thought it was fine enough. I this, remember watching that when it came out and just being like, it's not as good as the original, and I yeah. just wrote it off and never thought about it again. No, I don't even good. remember like what happens. It's good. It. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's one. There's ma- like slight difference. One right? major difference. Very I know small. they focus in that less on like demons and more on the ghosts of the DeFeos, right? I think so. Mm-hmm. I, I felt, if I remember, I felt like Ryan Reynolds got more possessed. Like Jody yes. is, is portrayed not as a pig. But as the like kid who is that's just not what happened. Yeah, um, Ryan Reynolds in the new one becomes more of a murderous type. He turns he into Ron. He goes yeah. full yeah. Jack Torrance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but so this one, there's so much haunted house tropes in it. Mm. But they're invented. Th- that's what. That's the mm. thing. Right. You know, it's like if. I, you know, I've never seen this before, but I've seen every single... Every gag, yeah. So so I have to approach it differently. Like, there's mm-hmm. nothing in there I haven't seen before, right. but I have to respect it as an innovator right. in this type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, the movie does not creep me out at all, because maybe... It's like a comfort Maybe stuff. because I've seen it so many yeah. times, and I'm just so numb to it. The... I've watched tons of like documentaries and stuff and like watched interviews with people. That stuff to this day creeps me out. The real shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I watched um, last night this thing called My Amityville Horror, which I've seen before, but I rewatched it, which is the son, uh, the oldest son, Daniel. He's obviously an adult now, and it's him telling his own personal experience. What it was like for him. Yeah. Is he the one that had the thing shut on his hand? Yes, he's the one who had his hand Uh, smashed. Okay. And it's just him telling his side of everything and and his take on what went down, and that creeped me out. And I was just, like I said, I said in the last episode that I was up at three in the morning (laughs) just kind of (laughs) weirding myself out in bed last night. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I uh, it's fascinating stuff. We'll get into it. All right, so ready to dive into the movie, yeah. guys? The oh movie yeah, begins Definitely. with the DeFeo murder. Creepy music in the beginning. Well, God. even oh the music, Damn. Damn. even la, la, oh that's so unsettling. La, la. Yeah. Even <laughs> they start you off, you're like oh, oh. why is that scary? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's just unnatural yeah. sounds. Like, yeah. Yeah. La, 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 la. Because it's little girls, but it's like <laughs> ethereal, and it's like, why are they, why are they so happy? And there's a red background, and it's it's contrast. It's fucking brilliant start. Mm-hmm. God, yeah. So uh, the movie has creepy music, uh, the yeah. the shots of the house, and then we there's a rainy night, gunshots, mm-hmm. and a mother, a father, and four kids are killed. Yes, two sons, two daughters. So what can you tell us about these murders? So right. I always thought it was a mob hit. That is what Ronnie DeFeo told the police at first. Okay. So what went on here? Let's talk about it. Ronnie DeFeo, senior, the dead man. Okay. Yeah. Was supposedly an abusive father. Okay. And a drunk. My father was a <laughs> drinker. By the way, uh, DeFeo Family Ford, anyone from New York will know that they are the one of the biggest Ford dealerships around. Really? They used to have those commercials. DeFeo Family Ford. <laughs> 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 That's them out on Long Island. So he was supposedly abusive. His oldest son, Ronnie Jr., was supposedly into drugs, into booze, and into the occult. Okay. And oh, good mix. This is he, you know, there's all kinds of theories and stories and what nothing really confirmed. Nothing confirmed. So okay, so there's the room under the stairs. Yes. The red room. It is not in the blueprints of the house. 
he supposedly kept some kind of black magic shit in there. Mm-hmm. And he shot his family one by one over a period of Going about 15 room room. minutes. Room to room. The DeFeo. With a shotgun. Heavy sleepers. How did this happen? This is the creepiest thing about everything. How did how the fuck did this happen? They're all face down in bed. All of them are f- face down. He went room to room, shooting them with a shotgun one at a time. Mom got shot in the head. And nobody wakes up. Nobody wakes up. Nobody moves. The neighbors don't hear it. All they hear is the barking dog when this is all over. He did not use a silencer. That's confirmed by the coroners, by by, uh, the police and everything. Was it a sawed-off? I don't believe so. No, I think it was like a traditional Just pump traditional. action. Yeah, <sighs> it's completely unexplainable. How far is the neighbor's house? Because shotguns, they're like it's regular it's suburb a suburban shit. neighborhood. There's like a house next door. Right. Like not the movie far, right? they shoot it like it's isolated. Yeah. It's like you could walk there right. in like a minute. Exactly. Less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, neighbors not so shocking as the but the people the in the people house in themselves. the house is no one struggled. Shocking. Right. Just um, struck in by fear. You know? Who knows? Who knows what the fuck went on there? The kids easily like yeah they're just gonna, they don't they don't know what that is. The no one woke up. <laughs> I'm just saying like <laughs> right. if the kids might have woken up and did he blow his head know? off? No, he was a re- he went to work the next day at the family uh, auto uh, shop. Okay, and the police picked him up, and he se- told them that he believed. Oh, he said that a mafia hitman broke into the house and made him kill his family, forced him at gunpoint. Hmm. He was later interrogated, broke, and then said that voices told him to kill his family. He had had heard voices in the house that demanded this is what he had to do. Did those voices have a lot of vowels in their names? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It was a gabagool. Yeah, yeah. Gambino, <laughs> Banano. <laughs> I don't know. Get it, Gaba Ghoul. Ah. Oh, the ghoulie. So, yeah, he killed his family. Now, it was, I've heard Ed Warren. Yes, who we're going to see in our next movie. Mm-hmm. He has said that Mr. DeFeo, the elder, was very worried about his son and had traveled not long before his death to Montreal, where he visited a big Catholic church up there. Okay. And brought. Ba- he asked a priest to come back and bless the house for, I guess, <laughs> he felt that there were satanic presences in the house. The priest had to come and bless it, and he brought back these statues, which the Warrens have been big on pointing out that these like religious statues are in the front yard. Yes. So. That all happened after the movie takes place. Like, the Warren shit's not in the movie. Yeah. Uh, But we'll get to that later, I guess. So, we see the murders in the movie. And then Mr. Strickland is there from Back to the Future. I was going to say, Strickland, (laughs) didn't that guy ever have hair? (laughs) I was so happy to see him. Yeah. Oh, there's a better cameo. Oh, I can't (laughs) wait. I have jokes ready. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I know. So yeah, we, Strickland's there. Strickland's there. The The police chief, you know, they're talking. It's 3.15 in the morning. Bada bing, bada boom. We Sarge fast. is smoking a cigar. Yeah. Very 70s. That Very cool. smokes a lot Everybody's, of cigars through this. This movie is so 70s. Yes. It's, Everyone's yeah. like smoking or rugged or sweaty. Yeah. The style is yeah. just <laughs> the, the, the outfits and... It's, uh, it's great. And then so, we get to the Lutzes moving in. And Mar- while well, they're touring the house, Margot Kidder is with James Brolin. They're touring the house. Let's talk about Margot Kidder. Well, real quick. Mm-hmm. They could have avoided all this if they had the ghost realtor from mm-hmm. Nathan for you. Yes, of course. If they had How do you not think of the Nathan ghost Nathan comes up a lot on the show. As someone <laughs> who's never seen Nathan, Brian I, I don't know it. the whole show. So I love it. <laughs> but if they had had her come yes. and she did her stuff, she could have certified that the house was ghost free. She could have. Yeah, they could have brought the guy. <laughs> now, the Spanish guy. For the, for the price. Gone, <laughs> demon. <laughs> for the price. Get out. $80,000 for that house. Oh, my God. $80,000. Yes. Now, That's hold on. Now, Let's say you get the ghost realtor yourselves. Yeah. And she's like, listen, this motherfucking thing's haunted. But it's 80000 Do you still go through with it? No. 
Well, uh, the <laughs> no. real, I think the movie implies that the realtor knew it was haunted. Yeah. She, they all know the murders. Happened. Yeah. They um, tell her. They're up front. Yeah. The, like, you know what but happened the here. realtor is clearly afraid of something in the house. Oh, yeah? In the movie. I think so. She's like kind of nervous in there and she's and they have that moment where she's at the kitchen table writing something like right after they leave after yeah. they agree to, and the the door closes yeah, yeah. she knew what's up that's why it's so cheap yeah the property let's talk about the property right it's, it's okay. this giant fucking mansion it has beautiful in the movie there's no pool in real life there's yes. a heated pool there's a dock they, a there's dock. a dock yeah. for boats george has a boat He's got two motorcycles. Which mm. for a struggling business guy. He's like a he's land doing surveyor. Real well. He's a legitimate businessman. Right. <laughs> he's um, doing real well. He's like, oh, how are we going to afford this? He has two motorcycles on a boat. <laughs> one thing that is not real. It's it's said in the movie, but it's not really touched upon. And I think this is pertinent. They get all of the DeFeo's stuff with the house. All the furniture. Oh. Was that mentioned? The, it's like included in the price. They got... Their sleep, the beds they're sleeping in murdered. are the beds they were murdered in. Just different mattresses. Aren't you just asking for trouble? Yeah. He, totally. You couldn't just switch the fucking totally. beds. Totally. But now I'm going to, from the thing I watched last night with uh, Danny, he hates his stepfather. Hates his guts. He hates. Hates George Lutz, which is James okay. Brolin's character. He believes that George was dabbling in occult shit. Himself. Long before they ever got to the house. Oh. Really? He says that when his mother first brought him to his house, and they lived there for a short time, his bookshelf was filled with all kinds Rolling of- Rolling Stone LPs. With Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Satan's favorite band, Pink uh, Floyd. Damn a cult. <laughs> um, Satan loves echoes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so sympathy says, for the devil. He says his how his <laughs> bookshelf was filled with all kinds of like stuff, and <laughs> usually <laughs> bookshelves are like yes. like Satan stuff okay. and telekinesis and hypnotic shit. He claims that George Lutz was able to move objects with his mind. He may be a little fucking nuts himself, but so he's, he claims George Lutz he say, has he psychic claims powers. He has telekinetic powers. Okay, he says this in the in the thing I watched. Right. If I believe in the devil, I will be able to move shit with my mind. He says George Lutz actively worked hard, and he had to took a few minutes to get himself going, and he was able to to move things with his mind. I got to go buy some books. <laughs> so that may have uh, contributed to the purchase of the house. If okay. There's any, if there's anything to any of that, that's there's why he also wants it. The 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 doc certainly hinted at. I mean, it explicitly said it. Didn't even hint at it. That George was the reason that everything happened. He like his presence is. opened up the family to be attacked by whatever is okay. in the house. Oh, that's interesting. That's that's interesting. Oh, well, let's get back to the movie. So they move in. Margot Kidder's there. Lois Lane herself. Yes, very hot. Oh my god, she's so hot in this. Okay, I I'm glad that uh, we're in agreement on that. Very hot. Oh, the outfits. But why is she wears. dressed like a child? Can't yeah, stand. Yeah, she wears like a schoolgirl she, uniform. First time right? we see, she's got pigtails. Yeah. The second time we see her, she's in a schoolgirl outfit. Yeah. What is going on here? Well, she has kids. Not, like, from from other... Another guy, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah so that, she's divorced. So she's just trying to look younger and appeal to the guy. I yeah. I think that's what's happening. Right, and th the movie does a bad job of this, but it's... it's They try it. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, the the house transformed her into an old lady at one point. She became, oh, that's what that makeup was supposed like to be. like 92 oh. years old. Oh, okay. For yeah. like 20 minutes. That is not executed well. No. No. That, I thought she had boils on her face. Yeah, me right. too. That's what they're getting at. They fuck a lot in this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, this like, is a sexual... This is a 70s it movie. It is constantly yeah. charged. <laughs> I was jealous. I'm like, wow. Like, what? Am I doing something wrong? But I think that's to the, to the point where it's like she's, look, she's trying to be younger. She's still... Mm -hmm. They're still in that stage of honeymoon phase almost. Yeah, well, they've know? only been married a short time. Yeah, they, it's um, they mention it like, oh, you only knew her like a year or something. Oh, one you know? thing I love is as they're touring the house, they're cutting to the murder. So like they walk into a room. And you see what happened. I, in you each liked room. those? I thought they were so weird. That's why I liked it. It was it's strange cool. cuts. It throws you off. Yeah. Yeah. I guess in theaters, because it, it might have been really loud and scary. Yeah. You know? So James Brolin, what a hunk. 
right? He's a man's oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a lumberjack. He so loves cutting wood. What's you want to hear something? You know what's funny? Like, I realized that. The Downey character, the lumberjack with the beard? Yeah. Yeah. He's that Bounty. 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 Yeah. I, I reference this movie all the time, and I make, like, I say lines from it, and you guys just really? never saw it. And I, I'm oh, realizing shit. now, you've, you've missed all my great jokes yeah. for, de- over the for year. a decade. <laughs> <laughs> over a decade, yeah. So you it want- wasn't me, it was Jody. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> so do you want I just to- thought you were a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't see people. <laughs> so you want to hear a little uh something interesting about James Brolin? Yeah. He was sure. almost cast as James Bond. When? Oh, he was the American? He would have been. He is an American. Bond. He screen tested. And you could watch the footage of him playing James Bond. And what, they picked Roger Moore instead? Uh, I think they ended up going with Timothy Dalton. He would have been a good Bond. It was it was either Moore or Dalton. I forget which one. But it reminds he, me a little he bit screen of Brosnan. Tested. Looks like Pierce Brosnan or they, style. Or they used him to get Roger Moore to like settle a contracts dispute. They're like, mm-hmm. we'll get Brolin. You know, mm-hmm. he can't have an American as James Bond, though, right? The old, the old. I think you'd hate that. Honestly, the Brits have been taking our superheroes for years. Ah, yeah, <laughs> fuck them. It's like if we, if he's doing a British accent, I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, but that's so, how much uh, of a off. that's how much of a hunk the man is yeah, that he yeah, was almost dude. James Bond. He, he's got a magnetism to it. He so does not this, uh, look a whole lot like George Lutz. I don't know if you ever saw. It, no, I never no. saw. It. He's kind of chubby. Okay, yeah. he's a former Marine. Really? So, yeah, and uh, supposedly he. Disciplined his kids in a marine like fashion. Oh, like uh, my father with me. Yes. Yeah. Did I ever tell that story on here? Yes. I don't think so. Yeah, you did. The PT story? I believe so. PT. Well, when he pulled the gun on you? No, that's a different story. No, that he would make you do like physical training. Like well, you'd, have to, you'd have to work out and shit. <laughs> yeah, but one time I got off the bus a stop early with my friend when I was in like first or second grade. And when I ended up getting home, my father lost his shit, mm-hmm. and there's a thing in the Navy, I believe. Maybe it's in every branch. I don't know. My father was in the Army, Army at yeah. one point. But there's a thing called captain's mass where you're forced to, like, stand in attention, and instructors or, you know, whoever is superiors just scream in your face and berate you. For he like, did this to you? Yes. And I was, like— As a six-year-old. Yes, and I was <laughs> I was standing in the backyard in attention with my backpack on, and I wasn't allowed to move, and he was just walking around screaming in my face, like berating me because I got off the bus to stop early and stuff to teach me a lesson. <laughs> I never got off the wrong stop again. <laughs> well, I guess it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they they decide to purchase this house, and mm-hmm. I guess it's true they they needed a priest to, well, to they're, bless they're their new Kath, house. Kathy's right? a Catholic. Yeah, um, that's a standard thing. Yeah, it and is. Yes, she asked the priest. The real priest is named Father Pecorero, and it's not him in the movie. No, like they when the movie was made, they still didn't know the name of that guy. He hadn't revealed himself yet. Yeah, huh. he didn't he want to come forward for right. a long time. Well, he just walks in in the movie. He just walks into the house. Yeah, in in real life, he met with them. He, yeah, I was wondering about that. There's the balls on this priest. He just walks in. Dude, he, he walks he, into he the hears house. people yeah. laughing and walks into the room like you two in there. He's looking to swing. He hears children laughing. Oh, but the, yeah, he's still looking. Children. To swing. He's a, he's the a children p- are out in the yard. He's a priest. He hears children laughing. He's like, he's oh, going oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a treat! Nobody's home. Yeah, <laughs> and he goes into the sewing room. This poor guy. <laughs> he gets the shit end of the deal with this whole thing. <laughs> the flies. The flies. So, common the, theme amongst haunting. This was done in scary movie. Yes. Yes. It was. When, to James Woods. When he's taking a shit. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> Help me release this demon. <laughs> They're all over his face. Thousands of flies show up. It's a great security system. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. guy's an intruder. You want the ghosts and the flies to get the intruder out of your house. Oh, you think he's just, you think the ghost is just like a good guy? Maybe? Maybe he's just I misunderstood. Mean, this guy walked in uninvited. He did? He looked for the kids. Yeah. He makes him sick. He's like, this guy's a pedo. Fuck this guy. And then it tells him to 
get out. <laughs> He's protecting those children. Look at him go. And he gets out. And he runs away. He runs away. Now, what are your thoughts on his abilities as a priest in this moment? This is something that I always, like, had a problem with with the movie. Why is it so hard? Now, I get that the ghost is preventing him yeah. from communicating with the family. Mm -hmm. You got to try harder than just making a couple phone calls. If you're if you've been told by a demon to get out, <laughs> you got to tell these people. It's right? is he it, tries. And it's not, I know he tries. Wait, he tries. it's not like he doesn't try hard enough. It's he not like he's a plumber. Uh, Right. You're a fucking priest. <laughs> and de the devil just told you to get out. Yes. Look, there is a... <laughs> we gotta he's take passionate. I give him that. He wants to help. But God damn it, take a walk. Is he, <laughs> is he a coward? No, I don't think he's a coward. No, I okay. think there's... We gotta, we gotta take a step they back. They forced him out. We gotta the, take a the step evil, back here. The evil forced him out. But later on... Yes. He needs to try hard. No, I, I, we got to take a step back. I think they played his part brilliant because you're a priest. You don't run into demons every day. Right. You kind of have a sense where it's like good versus evil is a thing. But to actually He's shocked to this just face happened. it, right. it's like, oh, my God, he tries to make a phone call and he gets hurt. Mm -hmm. He hurts his hand, if you remember. Yes. He gets bit, something which is a demon hand. Right. Which is a demon. Thing. And he yeah. goes, oh, crap. They could physically hurt me. Right. I have to tread lightly. And later on, you see, like, he's getting punished for trying to help even mm -hmm. the slightest bit. Right. So he's not completely wrong with hesitation. Right. So, like, well, no, I don't blame him you for You know what I mean? Him. Well, you just said, like, he should have tried harder. I blame him for later. Like, he tries. He tries to call. He, he gets tries. the stat. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. He tries. Right. He tries the as much as The drive over would. is just retarded because the steering wheel locks up and nobody thinks, I'm going to hit the brakes. He just keeps driving, dude. Steering wheel, and he's just fucking dude. all over the road. How powerful? <laughs> how powerful is this ghost? And you know what? No, we know how powerful that ghost is because it's on the LIE. We know the horrors. <laughs> you want to to make a traffic jam? Yeah. They say that ghost. They'll isn't never in get the house. to Long Island. <laughs> The ghost, the ghost isn't in that house anymore. He's on the expressway. <laughs> he probably touches the belt slightly. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1979, Father Pecorero went on the show in search of. Oh, with, with, with uh, Spock. Leonard Nimoy, Spock. <laughs> oh, wow. I almost called it in search of Spock, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Cruz. <crew>. Yeah. <laughs> but he did an interview and he confirmed that he was told to get out by a disembodied voice. Mm -hmm. Jay Anson, the man who wrote the Amityville Horror, the book, yes. that this movie is based on, he stated that when he met with Father Pecorero mm -hmm. and he spoke to him, that was when he decided to write the thing because it was corroboration. It was, yes. It, it was like the Lutz's story, and the Lutz have been called frauds for decades now. Yes. By different parties, other people that believe in them, or people that think they're frauds, the people that think the Jay Anson is a fraud, there are people that think the Warrens are a fraud, and everybody's a fraud, and everybody's not a fraud. You know, it depends on the point of view of whoever's talking. From a certain point of view. From a certain point of view. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. he said that the priest was the man that convinced him to write the book, and that's okay. What started the fucking craze, the whole thing. Yeah, the book blew it up. Yeah. So he leaves. The Lutzes never see him. Yep. Because they're out on a boat. And they're like, this lazy priest never showed up. Yeah. She's annoyed. But they're they're still in the process of moving in. And they're going into the attic or the basement, and a, the kid is shocked. He falls down the stairs. But like there's he like smashes an smashes a light bulb. Yeah, yeah, there's like an electrical shock yeah. though, right? Well, he hits the light bulb when he falls uh, down. He okay. tries grabbing yeah. and he misses. <laughs> and it explodes, and the father's just like, oh, don't worry about it. And he seems nice, but he's got something He was off. about to discover the Red Room. Yeah. And he knew something was down there. The dog was down there. Harry. Yeah. And Harry's a good boy. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you, that, that Red Room. I can't wait to talk about the Red Room. The guy in, in my Amityville Horror, um, uh -huh. he said that he has this recurring nightmare that of an event that happened. He said the, the dog was on a uh, leash, and they kept him outside like they do in the movie. Uh -huh. And he was, it was just long enough where he could get over the fence, but he wouldn't touch the ground if he hopped over the fence. And he said the dog was, oh, like, hanging himself because the, just the fucking everything, was like, the uh, the boathouse was f 
exploding with like all kinds of fucking evil demon activity. Yeah. And like the gir- the door was slamming up and down and shit and the dog's losing its mind and the dog was hanging itself and he had to save the dog. Like, this is he- a dream? No, this really happened and oh, he this- has the recurring the nightmare. The recurring about nightmare. It. Yeah. Oh. And Oof. he's and he said he would he had to when he's a little kid he had to like yeah. save the dog and get it back up over the the fence and he has this just this nightmare about that all the time. Oof. And that's when he saw the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the pig in the house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so the kid is shocked. Now Brolin sneaks up on Margot Kidder, and he's it's time for some hanky panky. Yeah, and they is st- this when she's like doing yoga or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. in her underwear. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh, hot. sorry, you saw me. Tee Yeah, with a flower in her hair. Yep. That's how I normally do yoga. Mm. <laughs> she gets all dolled up yep. all the time. <laughs> and then the kid sneaks in and cock blocks them. What a what a piece of garbage. Yes. And then they put her back in, and now the rocking chair starts mm. moving. Yes. And there's a creepy doll shown in the chair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you guys think of that? It's weird. It's it's, it's a little unsettling. The yeah. basics of horror. So like I, like every October, I I show my students Dracula, 1930, Bela Lugosi. Yes, Jen and loving it. The scathing Vietnam uh, <laughs> war critique. critique. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. I show them the first Dracula, and I talk about the basics of horror. Mm-hmm. And when you're constructing a horror movie, especially like ghost shit, it's very basic, simple stuff that's Subtlety scary. Subtlety is so much better than in-your-face shit. Mm. Like, a door opening can be terrifying. Yes. Like, an unseen noise, the dark, unknown things just scare human right. beings because we don't know what's there. Your you know? imagination And it's the is basics worse, of yeah. horror. Imagination is worse and than reality. And Paranormal Activity, the reason that movie's so successful is because it's just the basics done in such a new, at the time, believable way. The the uh, hidden camera stuff. Hidden camera stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just doors opening, mm-hmm. like people standing there people looking weird. The floor. A pan falling. There is... um. This for me the creepiest the movie the moment in this movie that gives me the chills even last night when I watched it is it's not even a scary moment it's when Kathy's in the house by herself she hangs up the phone and you just hear nothing it's just like wind blowing and yeah you, and this, the camera zooms out and you just she's just very alone mm-hmm. and you know that there's just something in there. But it's not even doing anything. It's just there. It's just there. You know it's there. She knows it's there. And nothing is happening. It's just silence. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it fucking gives me the chills, that scene. Yep. What else? There's the jump scare cat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, now it's 3.15. And let's, we got to talk about this again, because the witching hour comes up. Yeah. But this witching hour is very specific. Yes. Because you wake up at 3.14 and 3.15. Stone Cold Steve Austin. 316. Oh my God. This ghost is just like, wake up. You got to get two buds you get in ready. your system for Stone Cold Hour. <laughs> you got to sodomize Vince McMahon with like you a gotta catheter. S- fuck Vince McMahon. You got to fill his car with some. Every men. day, you get on your Zamboni outside, cover yourself in Bud Heavy, and worship the ground of Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know what? I'll wake you up early for 315. I'll give you a minute. I'll What'd you say, E.T.? What? What? <laughs> ghost knows what's up. This ghost is the good guy in this whole thing. <laughs> I'm telling you right. I will prove it. I will prove it. Ghost you, is a good guy. You like the ghost. Ghost is is the man. <laughs> you're saying this, and you know like you're going to get ghosted oh, so fucked. hard tonight. I'm <laughs> oh, I'm so screwed. I'm going to text you guys at 3.15. Guys, you're not going to believe this. Um, Stone Cold's at my house. Where are we in the movie? Right now, the next thing is... J- James Brolin is chopping wood, being a sexy lumberjack. Yeah, this is and, the AKA. And Margot Kidder comes and starts busting his balls about the fucking groceries. Oh, she she rips the bag. Yeah, she she couldn't do it. There's yourself. a week's worth of groceries rolling down the street. Yeah, you could <laughs> you couldn't help him. Like you could, he's clearly working. Yes, you so can't bring in groceries well, yourself. He has. She's like, got enough wood to heat the whole South Shore. He has like four <laughs> months of wood chopped because this is a uh, AKA the wood chopping fun. He loves, That's, he's he loves constantly wood. chopping wood. He's obsessed with that fire. And sharpening the axe, yes. and he chops the wood. He sharpens the axe, he chops the wood. How, how many trees are there? Like that, he's, he had to chop Where down like six trees. That's a good question. The neighbor's like, <laughs> like he's my just chopping, Yeah, he's chopping down his neighbor's <laughs> trees. We never see him chop down a tree. No, but he's chopping wood. <laughs> I 
Oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, it was very strange. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he does. <laughs> and he's clearly slipping. He's clearly going insane. Probably because he spends nine hours a day chopping firewood. Do you think as he does it, he wears women's panties? Oh, God. He's a lumberjack and he's Hopefully. okay. <laughs> yes. He sleeps all night and he works all day. <laughs> <laughs> so... So uh, now we are introduced. The little girl talks about her friend Jody. Jody, quickly, yeah, what yeah, a creepy little child. And the priest tries to call them. Yes, and they cannot talk. The line is all static. Did Aunt Helena show up yet? Is that the nun? Yes, yeah, she nun. is about to show up. Uh, yeah. But something happens before the nun shows up, which is very important. Okay, what is it? The toilet is overflowing. Ah, yeah. Oh no, the nun shows up. Then the toilet looks like mine after White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> They yeah, struck it, gold. She shows up as the, uh, yes, Texas T, <laughs> as uh-huh. the toilets are going bad. Toilets aren't going bad. The ghost is going, hey, you're sitting on cash. <laughs> and I'm going to show you where that cash is. There's a little red room. <laughs> you're about to be millionaires. <laughs> We're going to fix this they're, house. They're going to get themselves a cement pond. <laughs> um, Sister walks in. She might see the oil. If she goes upstairs, she's going to see the oil in the bathtub or the, ba- or the bathroom. The ghost is like, uh-uh, you're getting out. Scares the fuck out of her. She bounces. Nobody else knows about the oil except them. <laughs> this, is, this ghost is the protagonist. <laughs> Jody, uh-uh, bad guy. Jody's bad. Jody and the little girl, bad guys. Mm. Other ghosts, good. <laughs> Unless Jody was the one. What's your that. thoughts on the nun? <laughs> Why could she not tell them? This, as far as I can tell, is not a real character from reality. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, As far as I know, it might be. I don't know. And she, think about it from her perspective. She walks in the house, she gets sick and has this overwhelming feeling that she needs to leave. Right. And drops a plant on the floor. Violently throws up. Later, when she, after she's gone. gone. Um, It's always funny when somebody violently leaves. I just think, like, think of your own aunt if she showed up at your house and got sick. She just, just sit down on the couch and get I sick hate there. when Aunt Flo comes to visit my <laughs> wife. <laughs> it's a bad Every time. Every month she shows up. Well, yeah. when you when you um, um when you go to a place, if I you don't get, know why she felt she had to get out of there, but I guess that it's just an uneasy feeling. There's the demon moment. shit. Une- 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 yeah, but she doesn't feeling. know that. Oh, see, I thought I she wanna, knew uh, about the demon stuff. No, 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 she no, went no, to visit. No. She yeah. just got sick. Yeah, but yeah. I thought she was there and she felt the demonic she presence it, yes. and it made her sick. Yes. Yes, but she doesn't understand that's what's happening. She's just getting sick in someone's house. I thought she knew the demons were making her sick. No. But we got to talk about this mm-hmm. because our friendly leader here MC Brian. has a, a okay. wonderful story it is time, about this. It is time for the first supernatural event of my life. Yes. Buckle in, guys, because it's a fucking Buckle ride. up, buckaroos. All right. Very similar to this. Everything I'm going to tell you right now is 100% true. I feel far less crazy for this one because I experienced it with my entire family. And if you ask any of them, my sister, my mother, they will tell you. I'm estranged from my father, so, you know, that's off the table. But mm-hmm. my mother and sister will... Close upstate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe he could honestly he could be dead. I really don't know. Anyway. Let's hope not. No uh, huh? I'm still rooting for the big Rupert repaired the relationship day. Right. It ain't uh, coming, man. <laughs> that was attempted. So don't those yeah. That's well continue. We, oh, we it's the most uncomfortable uh, moment of my life. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about it at some point. Some point. Sure yeah. All right. So what happens is my father was a corrections officer, right? He worked in a prison. And, you know, he has partners and buddies. And this one guy says, my wife just inherited a cabin either in Pennsylvania or upstate. I don't remember where exactly. I, I'm a little kid. Her father died and left her the cabin. Cherish the cabin. Cherish the cabin. <laughs> Now, my father happened to be smoking cigars and burnt it down after we stopped by the bubble boy. (laughs) But so the family is going to go to this cabin and hang out with the partner's family. He has at least one son. 
and you know he has his wife with him and all this, right? And we're gonna spend the weekend at this cabin, and it's like a nice really nice. Trip. It's a really nice like upstate cabin. So me, my sister, my mother, my father, we're driving. We're on the way. At a certain point, getting close to the house, me and my sister get violently ill, both of us. Start puking, high fevers, right? And my mother's like, oh, shit, they're sick. She calls the doctor. The doctor's like, okay, they're sick. I'm going to send you some medicine. He sends medicine to like a local pharmacy, and they go pick it up. We go to the house, right? So me and my sister are ill. On the way there. You make it to the cabin. We get to the cabin. But we're still not feeling great, but we're there. And, like, you know, my father is like, I told him we were going to come. We can't back out. We're going to look like assholes. And this is before cell phones, Mm -hmm. you know. But we're, like, not far from the cabin. Let's say we're we're 15 miles out, right? Like, we're in the town that you would pass through to get to where they are. Mm -hmm. Once we get there, supernatural events keep happening in the house. Brian, you got the shine. So I said in the last episode, I think some people are more susceptible to shit than others. I 100% believe there's something with me particularly, because I'm more sensitive than my sister and mother, but my sister has it. My mother has it. (laughs) I have it. (laughs) So... There is another... (laughs) So while we're there, (laughs) shit keeps happening throughout. And I'm going to I'm going to tell tell this. I'm going to tell some of the things that would happen. Mm -hmm. So you remember this? Yes. How old are you? I'll say between six and eight. Okay. I'm young. Pretty young, but enough to remember some stuff. Yeah. So there's a couple of things. And this is all out of order. I'm not going to tell it sequentially. At one point, we're sitting at the kitchen table, and we're eating. Like, everyone's eating whatever the meal was. And this is two families. Two families. Flies start swarming all over the windows. Come on. I swear to fucking God, if you ask my sister or my mother, they'll tell you the same thing. Flies start swarming all over the windows to this fucking house. Right? There's a pool table upstairs. And you just hear the pool balls getting hit. But nobody's upstairs. So they're like, what the fuck? The pool balls clanking. It's like someone's shooting a game of pool. Now my father has a gun. The partner has a gun. They get their guns. They have their guns out. They take their guns. They think someone's upstairs. They think someone's upstairs. They march upstairs. Holy shit. They march upstairs with the guns. No one's up there. They come back down. Wow. Balls. Flies on the windows, right? So at, w- at what point is everybody just fucking panicking? Uh, Probably at that moment, but they know, can't do it in front of their kids. It's not, you know, it's not panicky stuff though. You know, you're in, you're just there. Everyone's around. You hear some pool balls. It's unsettling, but it's not. I'm gonna run and scream. Flies are unsettling house. too, but could Fly, also but be they could be natural, right? Right. Like it's flies, like, flies come attract to food. Yeah, right. Somebody yeah. shit next to the window, or they smell food, or <laughs> right. well, I don't even know if they smell, but. You know, they're attracted to food. I remember when I was a kid, my dog yeah. took a shit, and we didn't see it oh. next to our backyard door. Yeah. And then there were hundreds of yeah. flies, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but the pool table is just like, oof, that's tough. So they would there would be footsteps. You would hear a door slam, uh-huh. and then pop, 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 door slam. Pop, 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 footsteps. Nobody's there but us. At one point, nobody here but us, chicken. I, I brought, uh, you know, the show Dinosaurs. Yes, well, I'm the baby. Gotta love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I brought like action figures of it. They were all like missing. They vanished. Your toys? My toys vanished. Mm-hmm. And like they, Maybe the other kids stole it. No, they searched. They were they were nowhere to be found. Completely gone. Uh-huh. There was a Teddy Ruxpin, which like that talks right. It talks, but like we were told. Like, don't go near that, like, into the room with the Teddy Ruxpin. Like, it was, it was like, you weren't supposed to. There was something fucked up with it. And, like, 
like it would just go off randomly, like when it wasn't supposed to. What would it say? Maybe they were just like, don't, don't go in there. The kids would get scared. Did if it they goes see off. something and didn't didn't tell didn't you tell about you. it? So later on, this is a, this is a postscript. The Teddy rocks on me. on the way back. <laughs> I'm scared of Teddy. I'm fucking. Um, this is scary, yeah. Brian. This on, is scary story. On the way back. Well, they're both sick at this time too. Still. Yeah. On the way back, and that's that's when we'll talk about the last part of the story. On the way back, my father confesses to my mother that. The guy said the house is a little haunted. The guy knew, and my father knew, but my father didn't say anything because he knew my mother would never agree to come. Oh, my God. So there's a whole bunch of shit Seems happening. Like it's very haunted. Yeah, it's quite haunted. <laughs> Seems like, like you might have brought something back to your house. There's noises. <laughs> there's all this shit happening, right? Uh-huh. It's fucking weird. So at one point, we get to bed, and... This is this is the part I in the cab, in the cab. In the cabin, yeah. My mother is like, we're leaving in the morning. Like I can't take this. All this shit's happening, right? Mm-hmm. It's fucking weird. I go into my mother's room and I'm sick. I'm like, I'm I need like juice or something. I have a fever. And my mother has to go down into this fucking thing alone. Mm-hmm. Go into the kitchen to get me like the medicine I need and all this. Right. And she said, as she's walking, she's just here and laughing and cackling at her. As she's walking down to go get the shit. Come on. I swear to God. And, like, the lights aren't going on. She's in, like, the pitch black feeling the walls. She's like, this is the scariest moment of her life. Wow. And she gets the stuff, runs back, and does it. In the morning, she's like, we're fucking leaving. Goodbye. We're leaving the town. We're driving. We get to the same point where me and Ariel got sick. Ariel's my sister. We get to the same point we got sick. On the way to the cabin, the second we pass it, fever's gone. Me and I were like, I feel so much better already. Insta- wow. Instantly better at the same exact fucking point. What about the rock spin? I, I got to know what happened with the rock spin. It would just like <laughs> like talk when it wasn't supposed to and just go off randomly. Oh, and like it was like I unnerving. I was saying. Yeah. Probably I'm, nothing. Honestly, like I'm crazy. forgetting probably some details. Mm-hmm. Like if we ever, you know, have my sister on for some reason, we'll ask her to brush things up. Or next she time we see my very mother, very young. Like if yeah, you're yeah. sick, she's yeah, but be like we got to get the details four, from the parents. Maybe younger. Right? Yeah. My Is mo- it possible that like the two dudes were just fucking with their families? Hold on, no, because this is the postscript. Uh-huh. So we immediately leave. Right now, it was the the dude. It was his wife's father who died. Right. The next day, his father comes to the cabin, right? Like, and they're going to, you know, have a barbecue or whatever. So it, there's the dead grandpa and live grandpa. And there was a dock next to the house. It was very similar to, like, the Amityville house, the way it was, like, set up. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was their dock or, like, more of a public one, but there was a dock, and I remember this. So at one point, the little boy is playing by the water, right? And... They're all like the adults are all talking and they just hear a splash and the kid is drowning in the water. They run in and they get him and they pull him out of the water and they're like, why did you jump in? He goes, I didn't jump in. I was pushed. Grandpa pushed me. And they look at like the grandpa. He's like, it wasn't me. I I didn't push him. I was nowhere near him. And he goes, no, not that grandpa. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, like, all this was told to us. My mother can corroborate it. My sister. This shit fucking happened. Mm -hmm. That's, like, the first supernatural experience of my life. Wow. It is still pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah, I'm creeped out. Aspects of it. Would you go back to that cabin if you had a chance just to see if it was real? Absolutely fucking (laughs) not. Just to see? Nope. I don't fuck with that shit. Nope. All right, I'll tell my story. It doesn't compare. You you got the shine. (laughs) You got the fucking shine, dude. Red rum. Yeah. Honestly, I'll tell you this. The past year or so, I really got into reading Stephen King. Uh-huh. And when I was reading The Shining, Jack Torrance is so similar to my father. Oh, yeah? Just this <laughs> rage monster. Uh-huh. Like, always holding it in, uh-huh. you know? Like, my father was a violent man at times. Uh-huh. You know, violent outbursts. One time, he picked me up by my throat and put me against the wall with one hand and was choking me. Right. Yeah. Every time you mm-hmm. smashed your speakers. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my grandmother lived up in Massachusetts. Okay. And we used to go up there all the time. 
And one day, my whole family, uh, my parents and my grandmother, they went to Walmart. They were out of the house. Okay. Me and my brother in the house. And she had a sewing room that had a computer in it. Was it a red sewing room? It was not a red sewing room. (laughs) And we had kind of taken over the computer and put a bunch of music on it and stuff. So I was probably about 13, 14, something like that. And we were into the band Sentenced. Okay. And I like that band. They're a great band. Uh, unfortunately, the guitar player is no longer with us. Yes. So we can't hope for a reunion. We were playing Tech and Tag, me and my brother. Okay. So we ha- if you can imagine the layout of this house, we have a living room. TV, we're playing Tech and Tag on it, play PlayStation 2. Down this long hallway is the sewing room where the computer is, and that's what we were using to play the sentence CD. Mm-hmm. So you're in another room. We're in another room down the hallway. So we need this thing loud so we could hear it and enjoy it. <laughs> so we got the fucking volume pumped all the way. And as we're playing the game, music's going, we're yeah. enjoying ourselves, bopping along, singing along, music shuts off. We're in the middle of a game. Yeah, that's weird. We didn't go investigate. Okay. So the music's just all off. It's silent now when we're just playing our fucking uh, Tekken. All of a sudden. After how long about? Maybe three, four minutes. Okay. The sound comes back. The sound is, I'm not exaggerating, ten times louder than it was. The speaker's cannot possibly produce the level of volume that was coming out of them. These are little stupid computer speakers. Yeah. It's not sentenced anymore. What Uh, is it? It is a cacophonous sound. Oh, Billy Joel. (laughs) (laughs) It's piano, man. No. It's not music. It's it's just loud. Like, 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 it sounds like if a metal album huh. was condensed into a single sound. Okay. Like, it's it, there's nothing musical It's firing about. off yeah. on all right? levels. And a voice is over the, the sound, and it's speaking backwards. It's going... <laughs> like, unintelligible words. Yeah. Mm. So we fucking lose our shit. We run into the room. And I look, and it was Windows Media Player, if you guys can remember what that was like. Yes. Windows Media Player did not play backwards. No. But there it was at the the bar. The fucking bar is moving backwards. I'm I'm watching just fucking something happening. And I'm trying to click out of it, right? Exit out, exit out. Computer's completely frozen. All that's moving on it is Oof. that is that bar going back, going back with this horrible, with this ho- and it's so loud. So the only thing I could do now was rip the plug out of the wall. So I fucking move the desk, and I and my brother's with me. You know, yeah. He, yeah, he's part of this whole thing. I pull the plug out of the computer, shuts off. Thank fucking god. Because if it stayed on, I don't know yeah. what the fuck. I would do. <laughs> you run. I get out <laughs> of the house. Run. Yeah. yeah. So we now go back into the other room. We put the game, we had to do something, right? So we put the yeah. game back on. The sound's now on the game, and it's like, we're just going to, like, we didn't know, we, like, we just continued, right? Yeah. My parents come home. We tell them about it. My dad, he told us a story. Okay. So my father's grandfather, my great-grandfather, had died in the house years earlier. Okay. Like, I don't know. Cl- 60s, prob- probably 70s. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, probably close to 10 years before that. Okay. In the 90s. I knew the man. Okay. This is your grandfather? This is my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather, yeah. okay. He had died in the house, in the basement. My father tells me that he was in the house like a year before this incident, and he was working on his car in the garage. He was doing something. And he had the Who playing extremely yeah. loud. Damn occult. And he's just rocking, you know? <laughs> just the Who. Bob yeah. O'Reilly's going. <laughs> something like that. And, and he's not using a computer. No, he's this is just a CD player in yeah. his car. Stereo kind of. And all of a sudden, the car starts shaking uncontrollably he, while he's work, while he's physically there. Yes. And he 
you know, he stopped what he was doing and he just shut everything off and went upstairs. He said that he his his interpretation was, was it was his grandfather who always hated rock music. He just his whole life despised it. And he said that there's no doubt in his mind that it was the old man. And, Being like Yeah, and he just didn't like what I was doing in the house, fucking making a racket. Playing rock music. Yes, and but he decided that he needed, I will show to, you. he needed just to show me satanic fucking sounds <laughs> that literally stick with me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You got uh, one, Steve? I don't <laughs> see my experiences. I, I don't have like very haunting mm-hmm. where it's it's troublesome. Like besides the clock flying off the wall one time um, in my attic, things would just go off. Like, we have a lot of decorations, so something might go off. But I chalk that up as, like, electrical shit going wrong. Like, you know, minor things like that I could chalk up as, like, whatever. Most of my stuff is dream what I've woke up from sleep paralysis, had, like, demons sitting on me and shit. But that's, like, actually common, believe it or not. There's paint- <laughs> there's paintings of it. No, no, really. It's, yeah, it's, I know. it's it, just it the idea of demons um, sitting on your chest and be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> because it's so, it's so like, I, when you look it up, it's like, oh, this happens to everyone. Like, it's a thing in your mind. Mm-hmm. But... I do have something that was utterly terrifying that I've had people say, like, I don't want to see this. Don't don't show this to me because it's physical proof. Oh, the photo. Something. The photo. So we mentioned last episode. I have a photo from Halloween, around Halloween at least. You could tell by it because a lot of the trees are dead. My sister, I have three sisters, two younger, one older. My younger sister, one right below me, um, had two disposable cameras and she was hanging out in a field with their friends playing football. So it's a group of friends. The boys are playing football. The girls are hanging out on the side. And they're taking pictures of the day. Right? Oh, they go to the shop. They take pictures of themselves. Oh, look, they play football. They take pictures. And we had pictures developed. And my family has a giant cart of pictures that have been developed over years and years. And sometimes we just pull it out. Like and a big l- box. Big box. And we get together and we look through them. We laugh at memories. Because mm-hmm. that's what you do. It's a great time. Sure. Everybody likes looking at photos. And I pick up the two pictures from that f- the field that day. Mm-hmm. And I look at one, and I'm like, oh, look. They're this is years after the photos were taken. years after. I look, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Like, there's some kids playing football. And the next one, I see some kids playing football, and I go, oh, wow. Was this, like, like around Halloween? Can we put this up on the Instagram? I'm going to put it up oh, on yeah. Instagram. It's actually up on one social media for something, and I'll, I'll explain later. Mm-hmm. And I say, oh, this is in Halloween. That's pretty cool. And I, I show Brittany my sister Mm -hmm. and she goes um no that that's not it and she's clearly horrified Mm -hmm. she she's like that person was not there and i go what are you talking about and i want you to look at this top picture and i i want you to explain what you see oh yes okay so i'm familiar with this photo i've seen it many times over the years and scroll so that's zoomed in right but so you could go down this is not the the scary picture the one on the bottom so you have to scroll down and you'll see oh right okay it's zoomed in okay so yeah we've got two photos here there's two photos we're looking at one two three four five boys it looks like right so i'm holding two pictures and there's one on top one on bottom they're they're in a field identical and they're playing football and yes then there's two photos and the top one it's just a normal looking field. Yes. The bottom one, standing in between these five boys, is a figure cloaked in black robes. And they had to be taken shortly and after. They were talking it basically at the exact same time. Very obvious. Like it's not a shadow. No. This is some sort of thing. A person. It looks like a person. It looks like it's taller than everyone else in the photo, but it is. A person. These are teenagers in, who are about five foot average. How tall do you think that figure is? At least seven, six to seven feet six tall. To seven you want to take yeah. a look, Brian? Oh, I've seen it many times, but I'll take another look. And uh, it yeah. is always such a disturbing photo. It is a creepy photo. photo, man. I show this to my family, and they go, none of them has seen it before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it's been in here for years. Nobody came across this. So I took a picture of it. And I said, you know what? I have some theories. And I'm gonna I'm gonna deep search this because you took I, a picture of the picture. I took a picture of the, the picture. The one that we're now looking that at. we're looking at. <laughs> that, that will if you be go posted, to our Instagram. It's gonna be posted. It'll be there. Yes. Okay. We can't uh, forget. I said, no, you know that, what? That, this is important. Yeah. I said, you know what? I'm a video editor. I'm gonna mess with this photo and see if I could find Manipulate some it. manipulations. 
Because maybe somebody who was producing these photos likes to fuck with people and puts a little thing in. But if you, you mean do, like uh, the person who developed them, like at CVS, they might just be messing with you, mm -hmm. just to be like, see, like we'll fuck with this person. They got demons in there. Seems about a bit of a stretch, but a sure, a bit of a stretch, right? But let me make sure. So I put it in my photo processing software, and I change all the gradients, I change all the volumes, and I start to notice the grains match the picture. There's no outlines of this. Mm -hmm. They that thing is in the picture, right? And I don't know what that thing is. I don't want to know what that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to see, that shit's scary. It's creepy. And it's I creepy had to look somebody, I, I, I follow um, Halloween Horror Nights from Universal Studios because I love haunted houses. Yes, you do. I'm going to them. <laughs> and they said, share your scariest picture in your photo album. And I go, oh, I got one. And I posted that. And I had people like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> like, shocked. Like, is that real? Like, did you? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's the, I can go get it right now. I should have burned it, but dear God, that's terrifying. Yeah, it's and a creepy photo. When I think of the house that I was in, we knocked down a house that was owned by somebody else, and we built ours. That house was really? owned. Yeah, that house was owned by an elderly couple who went missing. What? Basically, like there was Did no you know contact. This? I didn't know that. No, they I, they I, went I don't. I don't tell this much because it's not something I I like to discuss. Because I don't think it had much to do. I just think they left. So you're saying like the the property, a lot of Staten Island, it was abandoned. Is what were small homesteads and yes. houses that had lots of land, right? And at least the area that we live in, or we some of us did yeah. live in. Yes. Um, oh, I don't like I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> uh, you fucking you left um, <laughs> left home. A lot of that land was like they would buy the property of one house and build an entire block right. on top of it. Yes. Yes. I so we had two here. houses that this person had the property, their house was on mine, and then their their land was on my neighbor's. Mm -hmm. We knocked it down because you can't get in touch with the people. They're gone. They're gone. They abandoned the house. They abandoned the house, at least we think so. Mm -hmm. Knocked it down, put it up, and there has been nothing but problems in our lives since we had that house. As far as property? As far as everything about it. like It's just like almost like bad luck, like constantly. Like constant sh bad shit would happen, and it's hard to really put into words because it's, it's, it's hard to rack it's a lifetime up. of yeah, I mean of problems. People, families have tough times, you know. I'll say this: all that, all the weird shit that I've mentioned in past episodes, and like even in this slightly, it stopped happening once I left that house. Really? Yeah, it happened. I think once since I left the house, and it was it wasn't even real. Like that that location. You think I fully believe? It? There was some shit happening, and that's why I think like he like Brian actually. No matter where he goes, he has an attraction. I think it was that house. Well, I mean, uh, it's well known that the area. I'm not gonna make. I'm gonna make some connections now. Oh yeah, uh, okay. the, the area that we live in, um, the Dead Woods, is well. It's the Lenape name for it yeah. is the Island of Bad Woods, mm -hmm. but specifically now I'm not even talking about Staten Island. But specifically, our neighborhood. Yes, is the village. When they built the school PS56, you can look this up, yep. they found all kinds of artifacts of the Lenape people that lived there yep. in the 1600s and going back further than that. There's a place in Tottenville, which is not far from us, called Burial Ridge, which is, I believe, the largest Indian burial ground ever found in North America. Did they fuck with it? It's been excavated. It's, mm -hmm. it's oh, you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder why bad shit's been happening to us. <laughs> um, but that was in the 1800s. Okay. But yeah, I mean, there there's certainly possible, yeah, depending on what you believe. You know, you know, this and that'll bring us back to Amityville now. Yeah. Now you know what I believe in: spooky movies. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they fuck again. Yeah. <laughs> And the 315 happens one more time. It happens a lot. Only she wakes up. She was shot. Well, Bowen <laughs> actually gets ED. Yes. Which yeah, is a very spooky that. thing. I thought yeah. that was after this part. Yeah, I think it's after. I think it's after when she screams. No, the nun throws up. Yeah. Um, she pukes. Mary's painting. Like, they're painting the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and then Brolin, there's a fire scene. He's into the fire. Yeah, he loves it's the cold fire. in the house, mm -hmm. especially for him. Yep. The guy, the kid, Daniel, in his documentary as a man, 
has said that it, the house just made no sense as far as warmth. Really? He said it's hmm. just areas would be freezing cold. Other areas were totally normal. Others were hot. He said that you could have a 20 degree difference within two feet of each other. Yeah, that sounds like Brian's my house. like that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That sounds like my house. <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts. So anyway, they're unable to fuck. Yeah. That nothing is scarier than ED as far as we're all concerned right. at this yeah, table. Yeah. Yes. Which I want to talk about our first sponsor. Blue chip. <laughs> so if you're being haunted by apparitions or ghosts and they are hurting your ability to maintain an erection, I want you to go to bluechew.com. Type in reviewing history, history so they know who sent you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the witching hour. 315 uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> she was shot. She's having a night terror. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever slept over Brian's house, but he has night terrors. I do, too. You do, too? Wait, I have night terrors? Yeah, you, you don't remember most of them, but you wake up and you scream, Taxation is theft! <laughs> and it's like, oh, God, and, it's, and you just go back to bed. Nothing scarier <laughs> than them coming for my money. <laughs> now, the priest's car. <laughs> what do you scream? I just in, We all this scream. This never it's happened to me scream. my whole life, but in recent times... <laughs> I have just been, I've had nightmares where I, I make noises in my sleep. Really? It happened to me like oh. two, two weeks ago at work, and the guys at work fucking have been making fun of me ever since. Really? Yes. <laughs> what happened? What'd you scream? It's because your sleep schedule I went, sucks. Yeah, it's because my sleep schedule yeah. sucks. Yeah, I went like, ah, something like it's never, it's words sometimes, but usually it's just screaming. Do you remember? Okay. My wa- yeah. You do. Usually. Uh, like my wife has woken me up from this. Numerous times. Okay. You know? <laughs> I actually had a nightmare before we started the show. This isn't a bit. Oh, okay. Because I, I napped, mm-hmm. like, because I had a long night the You're night very before. Tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I napped before we shot, and I had a really scary fucking dream. I was working in my classroom, and there was an announcement over the PA, a nuclear bomb has been launched off, oh, like, fuck. prepare. And, like, oh, and I was crap. like, oh, shit. And, like, I was like... I was telling everyone, I was like, get in this side of the room. Like, we all got to get under. And there was one kid just staring at the window. And I was like, I I went to go get him. And, like, did you just see the bomb happening? And I fucking woke up. Were you holding the chain link fence as all the kids <laughs> got obliterated and that that's that, that sea lion I, fucking I think yeah. we've all had that I think we all have had that dream. I've had the nuclear had uh, the nuclear holocaust dream. Which is strange. I've had it from time to time. Yeah, it's strange. Now I think it's more prevalent because it's constantly being reminded of uh, friends. Yeah, well. But uh, yeah. Let's hope that the uh, so, uh, the listeners get to hear this. Episode. Now that we mentioned the the locking up of, of the car before. And uh, I think that scene happens after this, yep. which the fact it can control cars is beyond me. This is Yeah, crazy. what is the reach of this entity? I, Endless. <laughs> um, the priest gets his friend, who's a Vietnam vet, and they try to drive to the house. They're like, two priests can do this together. Yes. Yeah, a young priest and an old priest. And the, the, the older priest is a star. Do you know who it is? The actor? Yeah, he's so he's a name. He is a name. He looks like Bill Murray to me. Rod Steiger. <laughs> Rod Ster- Steiger. Steiger. Yeah. He does look like Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's got some Murray qualities. Let me think of that. So the the younger guy is driving and he goes, the, the wheel. The it's wheel's, locked. The wheel's locked up. He can't control it. And he just starts driving all over the place. Yeah. He's swerving, swerving in and out of, like, not even in that drive. He's just swerving all over the road. Cars are trying to avoid him. And he the drives. Hood pops up. The hood pops it's up. Insane. He can't see where he's going. And he drives off the road and crashes the car. He never says anything about the brakes. <laughs> I'm assuming he tried hitting the brakes. Just hit work. the brakes. I'm assuming he tried. How about you pull the key out of the ignition? The e-brake. That's true. Yeah. Shut the not fucking that car. Good, not a driver. He didn't think of it. No. So I want to tell you guys, this happened to me once. Your car locked. My car got possessed. I was driving my car. <laughs> was it repossessed? A demon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened one time too. Uh, my car was my. I was driving and my car got possessed. And I didn't want it to, but it took me to Atlantic City. And then the <laughs> ghost took over my wallet and made me spend way more money than I wanted on oh, no. bad bets. You poor son. And I lost everything. You have to go pray. <laughs> it was very scary. 
So, <laughs> so now the babysitter shows up, and I think this might be the most iconic scene in the movie. No, was there some? Isn't the money thing happen first? Well, it's 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 Kathy's brother's wedding. Yeah. Yes. The babysitter doesn't show up yet. The money goes missing. First. The ghost robs them. <laughs> See, uh, the brother Jimmy. <laughs> Brother Jimmy looks like he's about to cater the wedding, not actually get married. Yeah. He's the most he 70s like looking man ever. He looks like he's yeah. 17. <laughs> he looks like a cross between Greg Brady and like the kid from the Poseidon Adventure. <laughs> he, he's got $1,500 that he's counting for the caterer. Yes. He wants yeah. it in cash. Yep. And the he's talking to, uh, what's her name, Margot Kidder, and... We don't. Did we see where he puts it? He puts it in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. He, he puts, just he, he counts puts, it like twenty times. Puts, puts it in his the pocket. cash in his pocket. The cash vanishes. So now it's up to Josh Brolin to pay the caterer by check, which nobody wants. Nobody to do. wants that. It bounces. Yeah. <laughs> they're all sad because the well, they're sad. They're kind of frantic about the money being gone, but they'll they'll say they'll look for it later, and they go to the wedding and they leave the daughter at home. He was getting sick. Yes, he was getting he was Ill. getting flu getting cold. Symptoms. Yeah, it's, right. He's like, I'll go. I'm the best man, mm -hmm. which is strange because this guy doesn't have any friends. Yeah, <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, why are you having him? Yeah. <laughs> In the book, and uh, according to everyone else, they all went to the wedding. It wasn't okay. No so, one was uh, at home. There was no babies. All right. Uh, so the babysitter thing is fake. Yes. So Jody wasn't pulling a for fast one. Amy okay. wasn't being a little brat. Okay, so what happens? So <laughs> it's time for bed. Time for bed. Time for bed. The babysitter has a really big mouth guard. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She's a real metal uh -huh. mouth. And she, why does she go into the closet again? She's getting clothes or something. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. She goes into the closet and, and the, the door slams. The door shut. slams on her. She cannot get out. She's knocking. She's like, Amy, just let me out. And Amy's and like, <laughs> no. She's just sitting there and then the Staring. light goes out. Yeah. Amy's a prat. <laughs> This would really suck. Right? Oh, yeah. So it seems like she, she gets scared quick. And she's trying to open the door. It's locked. She's banging on the door, and she starts getting bloody knuckles. Yes, she's hitting the which heart. Which is a two. little... Uh, it happened too fast, but it, it's... It was a, only two minutes. It's a good effect. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's like, you've been in there two minutes. Come on. Right. You're, you're fine. But <laughs> it'd be cool if, like, later... When they got the home and they saw that the the knuckles yeah were they bloody. they look at her knuckles they notice it's bloody yeah. they were bloody and it's and like it's oh all. what happened and, uh, and clearly she, Amy doesn't give a fuck she just sat on her bed and watched for what appears to be hours and hours yep. yeah. of, of this woman trapped this girl trapped well they leave yes. the wedding early because he's sick yes so that it's probably about you and can when, assume like three hours when they get home the door just opens no problem yeah yep. Jody wouldn't let the girl open the door uh, Jody did we get to the did we them. skip the hand crushing scene. I don't think that happened yet. Okay, because I want to. I want to tell what he says about that. I might be wrong. I'm not seeing where it is. So, oh no, no, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. I see it. All right, yeah. Okay. So Jody wouldn't let the girl open the door. Brolin finds the money band under the couch. Yes, money's gone. Mm -hmm. Now, was there a money situation in real life? Uh, I think there was. Yes, and he and the check bounced and all that. Okay. Yeah. So. Now we get my favorite scene in the movie. The priests are all arguing with each other, and Murray Hamilton's there. <laughs> and he says... Mayor Larry Vaughn. Yeah. He goes, you mentioned ghosts? We're going to have a panic on the Halloween. <laughs> we can't mention ghosts. Amityville depends people, people, on horror. People, people hear poltergeist. They go, huh? What? You say ghost. And we have a panic on Halloween night. <laughs> Now, fellas, let's be reasonable. Yeah. You go to that house and see that DeFeo family spill out all over the top. It's the same fucking <laughs> He's character. He's the same character. The same He's the fucking same fucking person. character. Amityville, Amity Island. As you know, Amityville means friendship. But <laughs> let's, give him, let's give him this one. His character in this sense was more correct than the Jaws sense. Right? No, he wasn't. There was a demon. Uh, there was a shark. He needed more proof. <laughs> he didn't have enough proof. He's not wrong in Jaws. He's not. Yeah, what? They need summer dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like just like this, he needs more proof. You know what's worse than a couple of people dying? Every business and everyone just being yeah. unable to feed their families in the winter. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, I get it. He's a man making tough choices. You may not like him, but My you got to respect. Kids were in that him. water too, Martin. You got to break a couple of eggs to make an omelet. Mayor Vaughn is there, and he yes. is the 
he's, he's like a asshole. higher up priest representing like the establishment, I suppose. And this uh, this priest is very passionate, and he wants to. He's ma- he's Chief Brody. Yeah, he wants yeah. to go yes. and save the family, and this guy's like <laughs> demon. <laughs> I'll find your ghost for five, <laughs> but I'll catch, catch him, him and kill him for ten. <laughs> He's he's literally the same character. Yeah, yeah. They I can't. It's believe, a jaw scene because it's not yeah. it's not a it's a fictional character. It's not a, he's not based on a real person. Yeah, they put this in and it's Jaws to be like, look how much we loved yeah. Jaws. <laughs> there was some studio executive being like, Jaws is a hit. Let's yeah. just do a Jaws scene. Sort of. <laughs> the uh, what the other priest says something because they have this conversation. He's like, I'm not a psycho. I'm not crazy. Like I know I know what I saw and what I mm-hmm. felt. He tells him to go on vacation. He, he goes to go on vacation, but he looks at his, the young partner and goes, you need a haircut and a shave. Yeah. The guy has the a, guy. a slightly long haircut, but is clean shaven. He's clean shaven. Yeah. He might have like a one o'clock shadow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? Is this guy just an asshole? Like, what a dick. <laughs> he wasn't that bad. Mm. You get the visitors again, like the new visitors. Yes. So, Caroline. So now Caroline. the family shows up. She's smart. Be like Like they're relatives, right? She's like an aunt. No, it's um, it's his partner. It's Josh Brolin, Jim Josh, uh, James Brolin's partner and his girlfriend. Okay, and his Caroline girlfriend. Smart. Be like Caroline. Caroline is a fictional person. House is scary. Don't go in it. She she's like psychic <laughs> or something because she gets the vibes. Yeah, she loses her shit later. Yeah. And they go in the house, and they're gonna. But they they were like gonna go out. Yeah, they were gonna yeah, like yeah. go over something and yeah. sign papers. Because George is neglecting his work and he's and they're the, the he was, business yeah, is suffering. He was he's gone too for busy like, chopping wood all yeah. the time. <laughs> and not paying his workers. He was gone for like nine days or something. This the, is that this is the this window. Is the scene, right. yeah, the so window. the kid is trying to close a window. Nope. Yes. They're trying to scare Amy. Oh right. They're trying to scare Amy. They they're have, playing with the spiders. Yes. They have like a spider on a fishing pole mm-hmm. and they're fucking with her. And then the window slams down on his hand. Now, do you believe Jody is just protecting the little girl? Yes, yes. I okay. also think Amy might be a witch. Jody likes the little girl. Okay. But jo- Jody wants the house. Uh, the movie definitely implies the house does not want them to leave. Oh, it, you think that? Yeah. The house wants them. It wants to do the same thing. Oh, it wants to the kill them. Yeah. yeah. So the guy, Dan, the kid whose hands are smashed in real life. This is what he says happened. He was trying to shut the window. He was not fucking with his sister. Mm-hmm. And the window smashed his hands. Ouch. And he said that his fucking, they were like, it was so brutal that like his hands were like completely crushed. And like every bone is broken. Oof. They and, actually broke because in the movie they didn't break. His mother, his father, his brother, and George's friend, who was there at the time, were desperately trying to get the window up. Wouldn't come and, they off. and they could not, they get, could this not up. get it up for like a while. They needed blue chew. <laughs> <laughs> so they get it up, <laughs> and his hands are devastated. So now they run downstairs to the kitchen. And he's sitting down, and his mother's trying to get him ice. And this is what he says happens. He says, the kitchen door opens. A apparition of a human being appears in the doorway as his mother is desperately trying to get ice uh-huh. to like soothe his hands. It walks across the the kitchen, smacks walks, the mom's ass, walks going. through his hands, and sits down at the table next to her. And this is all like in a matter of seconds, right? And then it walks through his walks hands. Walks through his hands. Like he had his hands on the table. Oh, and it oh, just walked right, through. It walked like okay. through the table. Okay. And it sits down at the table with him. <laughs> Pops open a bud. <laughs> his mother's looking at it. He's looking at it. It disappears. His hands blow up to like six sizes. He said, he described it as the size of a kid's uh, baseball mitt. Okay, so they're really swollen. They're really swollen. And then they deflated and were po- perfectly normal again. Yeah, that sounds like it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's not crazy. Do you believe this? I do not believe this particular story. Okay. Because, first of all, he's a little fucking wild, this guy. Yeah. If you watch the thing, he, it definitely, he says that, uh, let's talk about his character for a minute. 
He says that when he was 15, he left home and went and lived in the desert out west. Okay. I think that definitely entails some sort of drug use. And I yes. see from the way he talks now that there's probably some residual shit from that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's obviously holding a lot of... Um, trauma. Trauma and rage towards George. He hates George. What about George? <laughs> <laughs> if this is what happened, how do you leave that out of the the movie? How do you leave that out of the the book? You know, yeah. why is it the first time we're hearing that? Mm. That's so fucking crazy. That's so weird. That's that, insane. That should be. But they mention it. They say, "How is his hands not broken?" Well, the story in the movie and in the book is kind of how it played out in in the other ones. In all every other hearing yeah. of this, yeah. is that his hands get smashed and then they're okay. He's just a kid that. Right. Sees it differently, you know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he's making it up or yeah. what. He or, imagined or, or, it. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible he could imagine. You, you have to understand a, a, another this. aspect about this guy is like he's what ten years old when all he's this a little kid down. and he's being told all this. His shit entire yeah. life, he's been surrounded by this media circus. Yes, you know, and he could very well create memories that didn't actually happen, yes. just based on stories. Mm-hmm. You know. I think that is a, a very viable Reasonable thing. thing. Yeah. 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 You know, so you know, misremember things and kind of just invent them. Right. Without, so like, without consciously inventing them. You just invent yeah. them. Yeah. So Brolin is attacked by some flies and shit. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. And funny. Um, the door is blown from the outside. Uh, this is in the middle of the night. Well, yeah. you, you missed two parts here. Uh, what? His wife wakes up at 3.15 this time. It's not him. She gets woken up, and it's like, she tries to wake him up. George, George, you got to go get your buds from the fridge. Because he didn't, he didn't wake up. 316. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. Like, he, if the ghost tries to wake him, he ain't waking up. You got to go for the next best thing. And then he walks, like, through the house fully nude. Or, like, in his underwear or yeah. something at, like, 3 a.m. He, then well, he, he wakes up at 315, he starts walking around. Then he starts house. walking around, which, you know, that's and normal. They hear then the door. Like a, an explosion. Yeah. And the door blows off the basement and out the front door, right? Yep. You think you'd leave at that point? Well, think about it from oh, their perspective. This. They've poured <laughs> everything they have into the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's come like on. how, like we see it now because we're like, oh, there's demons. It's if you're in the situation, do you automatically go there? You know. Yeah, I guess it's just weird shit happening. And well, Brian what, knows what he's been it, in the demon situation before. And what would have been your line? <laughs> At what point would you have left he, already? They don't realize that he's turning into a monster, by the way. You know? <laughs> yeah. We see that. He's chopping wood and acting crazy. Yeah. But they don't see that. He's just like in a bad mood. What would be my line? Um, yeah. Like, when do you run? Out of the things that have happened so yes. far? Yeah. Do you stay? Definitely the doors. It's hard because you have hindsight of what happens next. Yeah, because it's really a, a bunch of little things that add up, right? The doors yeah. blowing out. That's that. I think is when like other it's stuff like you can kind of every. Dismiss. I can't explain away this one. Yes, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, the the it's gravity. The door fell. You know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. This yeah. is the one when it's like, fuck. Okay, this. Yeah. it's like we're and that's kind of where they're at too. I think they accept, especially uh, she Margot says we're leaving. Yeah. yeah, she's like, we gotta leave. They kind of are just, they accept that there is a presence there. Yeah. And they start looking for answers about it. Like, she goes to the library, right? Yeah. She tries calling the priest again. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. He goes to the library well, and steals a book. He steals a book, which I'm like, why would you steal it? It's the library. It's a public library, yeah. What yeah. the fuck? And he, like, does that come, I'm trying to think, does that, like, go anywhere? Why does he steal the book? He shows it in the bar. With Caroline uh-huh. and the guy, and they're looking at it and stuff, and they're talking. And the, like the Sarge is like watching the house, and like nothing happens with him. He's just there, yeah, smoking cigars. Watch. He doesn't sleep. He's there at night, right. in the morning. I got. How is he? There? And he's always smoking cigars. How? <laughs> it's the seventies. That's what you do. Yeah, I, he... the because the story, the real story, as far as the the book is concerned, is is that the family is tormented by spirits, and then they run away. Yeah. They needed to pad the movie with stuff. stuff. Yeah. So it's like, oh, there's a cop, yeah. and he's watching the house, and there's a priest. He's going to see, yeah. And he's 
trying to do blessings and then goes blind. You know, <laughs> which is insane. It's also using elements of other popular movies from that time, right? So it's oh, like yeah. you get a little Jaws, mm. a little seventies cop movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's all these other little flavors. And it's it was the Omen before this. It probably was right. Maybe because that's yeah. the the priest thing is very reminiscent of yeah, the seventy nine. I think I think so. Yeah. I think it was 77? Or get with uh, Gregory Peck. I could be wrong. It's got to be your before this, because this is 78. This is 79. 79, 79 yeah. yeah. So I think The Omen is a year before, mm-hmm. which makes sense with That's all the That's a great movie, shit. too. I've never yeah. seen the original. Oh, it's oh, fantastic. Yeah, the, the remake was good, too. The remake was good. Yeah. That's, uh, a, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. I like The Right. That's a good scary movie that's modern. I never saw that. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. It's possession stuff. It's yeah. not bad. Anyway, so... The biker crew, they're in the biker bar. Yeah. Called the Witch's Brew, which yeah. <laughs> is a bar that does not exist. You looked it up? Aww. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> they made Fiction. it up. They made it up. <laughs> God, we need that. So, that was an invention of a writer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so they decide to go back and. Not this time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the priest makes a phone call and is like attacked again. Yeah, it's this the, poor guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's just, he really takes it on the chin. He's yeah. the one with the bad deal. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like a jump scare at the window. Jody shows up. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now we got Jody the pig in pig form. Oh, you mean the eyes? Yeah. This fucking stupid eye effect scared the bejesus out of me as a kid, and I never told anyone. Really? Because I didn't want to admit that I was afraid of it, because you know, like when you're a kid, you watch these scary movies, you're like, oh, that wasn't scary, no matter what it was. Yeah. And you know what I love? Like, (laughs) even like when I go to a movie now, Mm -hmm. you always know the movie is scary when people start talking and they're like, this shit's not scary. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah. you already know uh, it's like yeah. the shit is scaring the Probably hell scary. out of you. That's why you feel the need to talk and yeah. say that. Yeah. This as a as a kid and fucking when that eye thing happened, it's not. It's the worst effect ever. You know, it's just like a light. Yeah. <laughs> well, but yeah, it, it just gave me the fucking heebie-jeebies as a as a little kid, and I and I remember being like, this, this is stupid. You know? <laughs> I just saw. Um, I just saw not too long ago the movie Bar- the Bar- uh, Barbarian, mm-hmm. which uh, Zach Krieger directed. One mm-hmm. of the whitest kids you know. Really? Yeah. He directed a horror movie. It is fucking awesome. Yeah, dude, fantastic. I can't recommend What's it up enough. With comedy guys making horror movies. You know what I've realized? It's interchangeable. I w- no, I was thinking about this. <laughs> like Key and Peele. Yeah, and I've realized why they do it. So. Right now, horror is the last genre where people can actually take any sort of risk. You're right. Mm. And, like, you could make a movie on a low budget and do weird shit. And there's such a fine line between a comedic scenario and And a a scary scary scenario. So, like, they come up with these fucked up scenarios, and you could totally play Barbarian and make it, like, hilarious. But What's it about? It's best not to know anything about it. So I'll oh, just tell okay. I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> okay. And this is a brand new movie. Brand new. It's in uh, theaters for us. All right, guys. This for is us. this is the endorsement. So it's probably yeah. a month I, old at this I point. Fucking <laughs> I can't recommend checking it out enough. I loved it. Basically, the premise is this. This girl and I'm this gives away nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. This girl shows up at an Airbnb. Uh, and there's mice there? There's no mice. Uh. And she, like, Probably is looking for the key, and she can't get in, and it's raining, and she opens the door, and it was double booked, and there's this dude already there. And, she, and he's a barbarian. Already ensues. And <laughs> he's like, what What are you doing here? She's like, I booked this. He's like, I booked it. And they show each other the reservations. This was an episode of Rocco's Modern Life, if you remember. Yeah, it was. They, they rented a ski lodge, and then the big heads yes. were there when they yes. got there. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. She fucking Rocco the whole time. You can play this hilarious. Yeah. And I'm not going to give anything away. Rocco. But she decides to. We s- booked this months ago. <laughs> She decides to stay in the Airbnb, and it's her and this guy in the Airbnb. Uh And that's all I'm going to say about the movie. It gives away absolutely nothing. Just no fucked up shit happens. It is a tense fucking movie. 
I watched it. On, I went on like a Monday or Tuesday night. The theater was packed, mm -hmm. and you could huh. feel how tense it was in there. Really? Yeah. I have a one question about it that won't give anything away. Is this take? Does this take place in just one room? No. Oh, I love one. You room like a movies. one room? I movie. love one room. Movies. It takes place there. 90% of the movie takes place in this house. Yeah. Does Reservoir Dogs count as a one-room movie? No. 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 Uh, there's a, a really cool comedy horror, uh, Low, takes place in one room. L-O. L-O takes mm -hmm. place in one room. Awesome, awesome film. Aragami. 2LDK. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that takes place in just a room where the only thing you have to work with is Cube the story and the Cube. actor. It's like, I love it. Is that, is that a room shit. movie? I don't know. The I, cubes? Never, I, I never saw it. You never saw Hypercube? Oh, no. uh, that maybe. I, I don't know if, if we're talking about the same thing. Is it German? Uh, no. No, then we're not talking about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was your Shiza collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about that. So Somebody knocks at the door there, and it's like the ghost creates a vision of a hom hobo with beer. Yes, that was so weird. What the fuck? So at this, <laughs> at this moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is, could create visions now. It so could I was cars. One, I was, was it a ghost? No. I, so no, this no. is what I was wondering. Was it a neighbor. No. Uh, something bad was about to happen to her on the phone, and I think God sent that hobo to distract her from the phone call, and it saved her life. Or do you think wow. it was the other way around? The hobo was the ghost that was going to hurt her. It wasn't a hobo. It was like the neighbor came with beer. Yeah. He was yeah. like, "We wanted to welcome you to the once again." And you then could, he vanished. You could agree or disagree. Neighbor was going to hurt her. Ghost saves her. Yeah, that's a weird moment. I bet you the book goes in deep with that. And yeah. they just didn't put it on screen. Sounds like the ghost mm -hmm. is the good guy again. I'd like to, I'd like to know there's more a about lot. It. There's a lot of yeah. times when it's saving the day. I think that's right before the scene I was talking about before where it gets all quiet. Yeah, we, we skipped a little. Yeah, right after. Anyway, so they come back and the dog is going nuts at this wall. And they decide the to basement. to chop it in the basement, and the dog's paws are all bloody. Well, this is when the girlfriend. Well, they, you know what they um they have that whole moment where she starts talking about Salem. Yes. In the bar. Yeah. We, we, how, yeah. How energy. They were in the bar. Can't yeah. be destroyed. And they're reading the book. Yeah. yeah there's, there's only two rules: energy can't be destroyed or changed. And Vince McMahon is a <laughs> punk. <laughs> <laughs> The only the rules uh, you need to I've know. I've never heard anything other than the movie about this guy who was exiled from Salem. I don't think there's any yeah. no. reality to that. No. But the the other the other thing the Warrens are big on this that the area, at least the spot, pretty much the spot where the house is, was used by the Shinnecock Indians to house prisoners that they would take in battle and raids and Shinnecock. That's Shinnecocks. what it's called when a guy jerks off on your shin. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Shinnecock. Um, <laughs> they would shine up their cocks. According and show to them, to they would leave them out in the open and let them die of exposure. And that is—that's how they die. Yes, and that is the house. I would hate to be have a house built on top of that. Yeah, that would suck. Depends if you're a horror fan or not. <laughs> you might enjoy it. So they <laughs> as we know, yeah. So they find a wild. This is sick. <laughs> Did you see that pig in my window? That's so, not, I didn't even put that there. So they find a passage to hell in the house. Yes. They knock the wall down. And, Got, the, gotta get and into that, yeah. once they do it, the cross flips upside down. Yeah. We're getting we're in the high gear now. Yeah. And I actually saw a funny tweet about this today. About that movie? About crosses in horror movies. They're like, people in horror movies put up these crosses on the top and bottom, and they know it's going to flip. They're like, you got to go in through the sides, and then your cross won't flip. <laughs> It'll be fine. And I was like, so that's very funny. They yeah. discover where the oil is coming from, which, once again, Ghost is like, hey, here's your money. You gotta just you gotta get 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 the oil. That's all. I don't think it's oily at that point, right? It's oh, just, it's complete. It's a pool of oil. Is it? It's under the ground. I but it's not. It like, didn't crack yet. Yeah, it's not there yet. Because the, they're like, listen, dig, mm -hmm. dig, and they're not digging, so they crack it for them to you show. You know, it them. was oil because there are a bunch of American tanks and helicopters outside. They're getting they're ready invading. to invade the house. They're, ready. they're, ready. they're gonna liberate it. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna make it safe for democracy. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the Ronnie DeFeo face appears. Yes. That was played by Josh uh, J James, James Brolin's brother. Ah, okay. Yeah. So they wanted to look like kind of like him. I mean, it works. Yeah. 
So after this, boiling wounds appear on uh, yeah, Margot Kidder. I think yeah. that's to represent her like getting old. Okay. Um, there's that, a, that was from the, the real The statue story. attacks the yeah. priest. The statue attacks the priest. He becomes blind. Yes. There's an axe which murderer dream, another. which is done very well. Yes. Yeah, and I thought cool. I thought that that was really happening. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that that was like, you know, a thing. Also, this thing can blind priests. He screams, <laughs> you're tearing me apart. You're tearing me apart. And he goes full uh, Tommy Wiseau. Tearing me apart, <laughs> Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> I did not I'm hit. I'm coming apart. I did not kill her. I did, <laughs> I did not. not. <laughs> oh, hi, ghost. <laughs> Anyway, how's your sex life? Is that what you yell when you're coming? (laughs) I'm coming apart. So he smacks his wife around. He gets attacked by a dragon. (laughs) By a ceramic dragon. Yes. It like bites bites his ankle. (laughs) Did that happen in real life? I don't know. Okay. We see a nun playing basketball. Yes. Which sounds like it would be an awesome movie. (laughs) B-ball nun. I would totally watch it. Air nun. Yeah. Then we see the priest, and in 20 days, because 20 days have passed in the time of this movie, Mm -hmm. the priest is now, like, he's went through the arc of basically cricket on It's Always Sunny in 20 days. Like, he went from a happy priest, and now he's blind and, like, disheveled, and he's been through shit. He really got fucked up. He's the only one who got fucked up. Now, in real life, (laughs) the priest did not become blind, right? No, no. Oh, thank God. Yeah, so we're kind of uh, we're barreling towards the end of the movie. Well, we're here. We're on yes. the last night. Ah, yeah. Day twenty-eight. He goes <laughs> full torrents. Yes. Oh yeah. There's bleeding walls, storms. The trees the attack trees them attack through him. the house, yes. which is a normal Thursday in my house. I don't know about you guys, but he's trying to break into the room where the kids are hiding. Yes. Yeah. It's like the priest Margot Kidder saves them, and it really seems like he's going full torrents. Yes, but he snaps out of it. Yes. It oh, doesn't do, have do you yet. think if he got in, it was gonna he was gonna kill them? Yes, he was. He was. He's being transformed into the guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he's somewhat aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they forget the dog when they're leaving. Well, they get the. She snaps him out of it. Now they're like, we're getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yes. And when they walk out of the room, the walls are oozing and blood. The, That's blood. such a cool scene. Yes. It's cool. And they got to get down the stairs and they start falling. Yes. And they run out of the house and it's raining and they get in the car and they get like 20 feet and they realize they left the dog behind. Can I go back and get the dog? And the girl is like, you got to go back and get Harry. Yes. And no, like Margaret is like, don't do, just forget it. Yeah. Yeah. And now, which is smart because hell is opening up in your house. I have a question. (laughs) Is the girl sending him back on behalf of, of Jody? Jody? Yes. And I was wondering, is I think she, being she evil? Is. Amy is evil. She's sh- the smile she makes. Yes, right. It's very creepy. She may be that may be Jody's bidding. I That's don't what know. I thought. She's like, you have to go back for him. Mm-hmm. Like, and she's trying to get him killed. Amy's the evil one. That little brat. Oh, <laughs> uh, and doesn't uh, isn't there a point where she says that Jody wants them all to stay there yes. forever? Yes. And, yeah. yeah. Yes. And she's um, like, Jody loved like the old boy that was here. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Now listen, y- we've all had animals. We all have animals. Y- you go back for your animal. I'd go back for Milo. But hell is opening up. Sometimes you the, might just want the dog. To as, a, as a, as a <laughs> man, the family is out. You've done your duty you there. Yeah. You, you got to go back for you the gotta dog. You got to get them secure yeah. first. Yes. Yeah, they're yes. safe at yeah. this point. Now you go get your dog. And now right. is when the, the house is like, listen. Uh, you don't want to go dig. The dog's telling you to dig. I'm going to show you the oil. Boom. Falls in an oil pit. Yeah. As he's walking down the yeah. stairs, the, yeah. f- the stairs collapse and he falls into just a well of yeah. blood. Black shit. And then the dog's like, I'll get you out. <laughs> well, the dog is tries to kill him first. And then it's just like, never mind. I'll get you and out. He's like, and then he realizes it's him and, yeah. and he pulls him out and everybody's happy. Everybody. Yeah. Oh, I like when they... This is actually cool when when they get up the stairs and he's about to walk out of the house, the front door slams shut. Yes, and stops. Oh yeah, and they have cool. to go they out have to go out the window. Yeah. He, he yeah. has to kick. He has to break the window cool. open. Yeah. Cool so, <laughs> how bad did the ghost really want them? Because we already know the ghost has the ability to possess cars. And how are they people? able to drive away? Look, I mean, the car thing is an invention of the uh, movie. Yeah, you know, uh, look. They got out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's let's talk about all the real history. 
Sure. Yeah. Imagine well, this we happening. We kind of have been, but there is, we got to talk about the post Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What if something like that happened at like a townhouse? Like it's just happening to one house in the middle of a community and nobody else. <laughs> Like you just hear chaos from your neighbor in a condo. <laughs> yeah, like oh. it's just the downstairs, not the upstairs. <laughs> yeah, <there's chaos>. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funnier. Well, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's funnier if it's the upstairs yeah. because <laughs> what are they doing up yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> Take a broom and knock on the. This guy be quiet. <laughs> These fucking people. I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to having a fucking ball. Three fifteen like every morning. <laughs> this guy's drinking. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling about Stephanie. I don't know who Stephanie is. <laughs> um, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> so they escape. They go to live. They end up eventually moving, like to California. The real people. Yeah. So right after this goes down, before the book is written, as far as I know. They're st- they abandon that. Well, first we should just say they abandon the house. Yeah, all their belongings are. In they're there. not going back. They're they don't go back. back. They're like fuck this. They let the bank foreclose on them. They stop paying. Yep. They lose everything. Immediately after, their story somehow gets told. I forget exactly how to an investigative reporter with the local news. Okay. She contacts them. Interviews them. She contacts the Warrens, who are Ed and Lorraine. They are demonologists. Yep. We're going to meet them again next week. Uh Mm -hmm. They're kind of wacky, eccentric people. Lorraine was in the thing I watched last night, Miami Vihar, and she's strange. She, at one point in their interview while talking to them, produces a relic of a splinter of the true cross. What? Who does? <laughs> Lorraine Warren. L- Lorraine the Warren. real Lorraine Warren. She claims to have the... She claims to have a splinter of the true cross, and she's got it inside this, this fucking golden crucifix. Okay. Wouldn't that be worth, like, billions of dollars? It is... In, in measure, like, yeah. There's no number you can put on. That right. shaped the modern world. Yeah, like... It's what? The holiest thing And ever. it's just... I have How did this, this wacky old lady... In Hoboken, New Jersey... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you watch My Amityville Horror, she's in it. She pulls this thing out, and they... It's weird. This was filmed after her husband was dead. So she's okay. alone. Okay. But yeah. So the two of them, along with a plethora of, like, intelligentsia, like... Uh, s- Cynics? Uni- no, no, yeah. Uni- but not, I wouldn't call them University cynics. University people. people. Paranormal. Paranormal. Psychic. Psych, uh, psyche. Psychologists. Therapists. Psychotherapists. Yeah. yeah. They go in the house with a camera crew. Of course. And they spend the night there. And I heard two sides of this. So I watched I watched two things. One uh-huh. last night, one this morning. One was... The Miami Vihara, which we've been talking about all night. The other thing was just an interview with Ed and Lorraine. Okay. And according to Ed and Lorraine, they had all these slides and photographs from that night. And they were talking about how he at one point goes down to the basement and he saw the room and he felt like he was, he was being in Twin Peaks crushed by like massive weight. And he said that it like was in the room or out like- in the basement. Just in the basement, yeah. he's just being crushed now. Yeah, and he's got photos of everything, and and he's talking about how he just felt like there was absolute fucking evil there. And she says that she had hidden, uh, and she, saw, she talked about this in this interview I watched, and she talked about it in the Miami Vihara when she had the True Cross. Okay. She had this thing of Padre Pio, who's like an Italian monk. Yeah, um, I've heard of him. Yeah. She's got his like image, and she had it like hidden away on her mm-hmm. while she was walking around the house. And she said that he appeared to her and protected her when she went in the sewing room where the where the flies were. Yeah, and she said that she just felt like the darkest shit ever. She's like, "This is hell in this room." And they're like, "She supposedly like uh, psych got powers. I don't know exactly what they are, right?" Is that supposed yeah, to be she like, claims uh, she's a medium, like yeah. very sensitive to this shit. He doesn't. He's like a, just a an investigator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
and they go and they were talking about like how people were having heart problems and stuff. Now, in the Miamiville horror, when they weren't talking to the Warrens, to Lorraine Warren, they were talking to the other people that were there. Some of them. Yeah. The ones that are still around. And they were saying they didn't really feel anything. They didn't sense yep. anything. <laughs> they didn't see anything. It was just another night. And other people have lived there so- since. Five families have lived there since. And nothing. N- nothing. Cool. Yeah. According to them. Uh, yes. According to whatever. What they say. Yeah. Lorraine has said that the first family that moved in there afterward, their car burst into flames or something like that. Okay. That uh, happens uh, to Tesla sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So there's 100% there have been five families that have lived there since this went down. And there's, they've reported next to nothing, if not nothing. And George wow. and Kathy Lutz, they actually took a polygraph wow. test. Mm-hmm. And the polygraph tests came back that... They were not lying. Right. Hmm. So, again, to quote my buddy George Costanza, it's not, not a lie, lie if you believe it. Ah. But um, polygraphs are kind of BS, right? Like they've been proven. I mean, they're I admissible know. in court. I don't know. Yeah. They're not admissible. Good. They're not? I thought I they were. I don't think they are. No, they're, they're not good for evidence. They, um, you could beat a polygraph, that's why. Cheating the polygraph is a poor uh-huh. Do you know who invented the polygraph? Who? The person who invented the character Wonder Woman. They are not admissible. Really? Yes, the lasso that's true. of truth is the idea of the polygraph. That's no where it came shit. From. Yeah. yeah. F- I just want to end this off. There's a very creepy photo, which has creeped me out for many years. Oh God, another one. Yes. Of I think it was. It's either from that night when they were when the investigators were there, mm-hmm. or it was a 25 year like anniversary like return to the house type thing that was done okay. in like 2003 where they set up hidden cameras all over the house. And nobody was in the house. And they just watched what happened with the hidden cameras. And in one of them, there is very clearly a little boy's head sticks his head out of one of the bedrooms. Get the fuck oh, out. Oh, I saw this. I yes. know what you're talking about. Yes. Um, I will show it to you now. All right. I'm oh, very a lot of spooky stuff. This is very yeah, spooky this is, photo. This is scary. This is the spookiest photo. I I hope you turn that around um, and it's like you and like tidy white. Yeah. He's just in a hallway. <laughs> He's just posing erotically. <laughs> oh, that's horrifying. Uh, yeah, it's horrifying. <laughs> horrifying. Don't send yeah. it to me. Please don't don't take more. <laughs> <laughs> that would scare me. There you go. Oh Jesus. Let me see. Ugh. What do you think of that brain? I know they bought their fist. That is the you. scariest thing I've ever fucking seen. It's the scariest it's photo just, ever. The thing is, it could just be a kid. Like they could have just be, been like could be completely fake. Yeah, I don't know. It could be yeah. fake. But if that's tough. It, under the context, oh, you know what? Under- this must be from the night they were there. It has to be. Oh yeah. yeah. Because this lion photo. Yeah. Is in all of their photographs from that night. Okay. I've seen I watched them all this morning. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so they were this there. line photo in in the in the uh th- there's a uh, a painting or a por- picture of a lion on the hallway wall. Yeah. And that's in the photo with this little kid head. So that little boy is is, is from that this could night. Could be Jody. I don't with know. With the Warrens were there and yes. shit. Wow. That's there you go. All right. Creep test. So I think we... Uh, we got to post that photo, too, on our... Oh, I yeah. guess we do. We, we got like photos. Little, we got a bunch yeah. of stuff, yeah. So I guess uh, that does it for this episode. Yeah. So what, do, what do you rate this, Ant? I love this movie. This is, this is one of the best horror movies ever. Nine. Nine? Wow. That is... Uh, That's heavy. That's good. So I do want to tell you something. This was nominated for a bunch of stinkers, which at the time were the Razzies. It was nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Actor, Worst Actress, that? Worst Supporting Actor, Worst Supporting Actress, Worst Screenplay, Worst On-Screen Couple. This is a bunch of 12-year-olds going, this isn't scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> but like I, I said, I it, the movie doesn't scare me yeah. as, as, a, as a grown-up. It's the, the stuff. I think last week's episode was... That movie scared me. Yeah. This movie is not very frightening at all. It's mm. actually kind of comical at times. Even the new one with Ryan Reynolds is slightly comical at times. Mm. I don't know. That's how I feel. It's just a little too silly at <sighs> moments. I love this movie. I, I gave it a, a, a seven and a half. I think I, I like it a lot, but when it comes to like what I expect out of a horror movie, it's just like, eh. Okay. Eh. I felt bad. I just felt bad for the priest. 
<laughs> yeah, he, he really gets some wrong. Really, really, it made no sense. <laughs> the car thing made no sense. Like, they, it just some things I didn't like. What do you think, what about you, Brad? I respect it. I don't know how much joy I would get out of watching it again. Again, it's a lot of stuff I've seen elsewhere a million times. Yeah, it is the like you know an innovator in it. Mm-hmm. Like I've never seen Poltergeist either. So I give it three stars. I think it's really good. It's solid. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen it, I think it's worth watching at least once. Oh, definitely. So for me, three out of five stars. Good movie. Does it creep you out? I always get a little creeped out at this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I clearly believe in it to right. some degree. I think you made a good point. The creepiest thing is when it just pans around the room and nothing's happening. Yeah. That's the creepiest part. Yeah. After that, it just kind of is like, oh, stuff is happening. You know. But yeah, that was good. All right, guys. Yep. Sorry, I'm yawning. Sorry, listeners. Sleepy? Another one in the books. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Can you believe we've already almost done half a year's worth of episodes? No I, way. I, yep. Yeah, 26 would be the thing, and I think this is like 20-something. Yeah, so we're almost uh, half a year, boys. Yeah. All right, uh, it's time to say goodbye. Anthony doesn't want to say and goodbye. He, he wants to stay. It's still is- Sorry, I was reading. <laughs> My fault, guys. It's okay. <laughs> that was very rude of me. Bye. Thank you for listening, uh, listeners. Appreciate it. Have a spooky friends. month, yes. if you haven't already. Well, the month's almost over, right? There's one yeah. more. One more. We got one more spook one more. for you. One more spook. The spook is it's not coming. Halloween yeah. yet. Yeah. But the we'll good we'll times are rolling. Good. Let the good times yeah. roll. All right. So thank you all for listening to us. I'm going to be thinking about Brian's fucking creep stories. Only oh, now. none of us oh, are yeah. sleeping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're all going to be laying in bed. Mr. Marbles. Yeah. Right. Mr. Marbles. Marble. Seinfeld. Teddy Rocks. Oh, right. I'm going to text you guys four in the morning. You guys awake, right? <laughs> you up? <laughs> you got your buds? <laughs> so I uh, want to thank you all for listening to us. If you like the show, please tell your friends, get more people to listen. We want to do really cool things like going places, getting what? footage like of events. I'm like, not going to the Amityville house. I didn't say Amityville. I'm not going to your cabin in the woods. I meant more like Gettysburg. You oh, know, okay. Things like that. Fun like, places. Fun not places. scary places that yeah. I'm going to tr- be traumatized for the rest of my life. Thank yeah. you. Fun historical <laughs> places. And the more people that learn about us, the more we can grow and do cool things. So, <laughs> like, get arrested in Gettysburg. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about going to Gettysburg. Yeah, and that doing was... some things that may be questionable. Yeah. So, please <laughs> spread the word if you like us. Tell your friends. Tell other people. Rate and review us on iTunes. Give a five star review. A little blurb. If you want to email us, you can email us at reviewinghistorypod at gmail dot com. You could follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Our Twitter is rview pod or rview history pod. Uh-huh. I think. Instagram, we're reviewing history pod everywhere else. Please follow us. Give us a like. All that stuff. We have a website, which uh, links to everything. It's in the works. It's not not done yet, but... Maybe it'll be done when you hear this. Yeah, when you hear this, hopefully it's done. We we own the domain name. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, Follow me personally on all social media, at Brian Rupert. Follow me on Letterboxd. All of us, we rank and review every single movie we rate, we watch for the show. I do every single movie I watch in my personal life. It's fun to just check out where we stack things up. Like Letterbox is a cool site. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Brian Rupert. Where all social again, media outlets are available. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again to Tell em Steve, Dave, Walt, letting us record down here at the studio. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. The Fail Family Ford. Bye.